All right, hello everyone, and peace of Christ to all of you. Uh, today our topic is kind of a little bit special, and we will try our best, um, you know, to invite Muslims to call us and to be part of this conversation if they like to join. Uh, my Skype is open, so please feel free if you are a Muslim, only if you are a Muslim. I will not take a, 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 any call from anyone who is not a Muslim. Only if you are a Muslim, please call me. Now, before we start our topic today, uh, uh, somebody sent me a video uh, by uh, the owner of uh, Titan TV, uh, like uh, channel on YouTube. And he is trying his best to prove that Aisha, she was not six years old. Uh, you know, the, the, uh, the, the, this guy, he's a nice guy. Uh, I don't blame him for what he, I don't know why, why he's doing that. But you see, he is reading a Muslim article and he is convinced that this article is saying the truth. That everyone who narrated that Aisha she was at the age of six was a liar, and the chain of narration is not there. You see, we are reading from Sahih al Bukhari, my friend. The book of Sahih al Bukhari alone, just to be in the book of Sahih al Bukhari, you have to have Sahih chain. Sahih al Bukhari, Sahih Muslim, Sahih potato, Sahih tomato. So we call them Sahih, but they are not Sahih. So he go, he don't know Arabic. He go and read an article. The article they say this is narrated by this guy, and this guy proving to be a liar. Okay, so Sahih al Bukhari was an idiot, stupid. He did not notice that this guy is a liar. But the Abdul, who came a fourteen hundred years after, he come with the conclusion that this guy is a liar. So I don't like kids talk. I have a challenge for uh, the one who made this video, or any Muslim, to call me right now to and to show me one scholar. He agree with them. That Aisha was not at the age of six. Not an article written by Abdul. <laughs> Even the Muslim website, they have articles refuting those who claim that Aisha was 18, confirming that she was six years old, which means Muslim scholars in these days, they fight and they accuse the one who says so, which means Aisha, she is not six, is a liar. So look like the Muslims work for me. Uh, <laughs> and then this guy he said uh, uh, that the chapter of Al uh, you know I just watched it a little bit like I scrolled down in the video uh, he said that the, the one who's saying that the Quran is speak uh, of the age of marrying children is in Ibn Abbas and there is nowhere to be found my friend Ibn Abbas I show it to you in English because it's in English otherwise I can find you in every interpretation all of them they are saying the same I don't know how, how you know I, I really I I encourage people to to make a study but don't be stupid and don't copy paste what Muslims they say to you if we go right now you know I show I show what is written in English from Ibn Abbas or Jalalain because this is what we have in English or Ibn Kathir. We have those three websites. They have three. It's otherwise I can go to different. Uh, you know who who care about Ibn Abbas? You think Ibn Abbas is the only one who have an answer, or Ibn Abbas is the only one who said uh, uh, marrying children? That's that's a lie. You know, that's a lie. We can show you what the Muslim scholars they say, not a kids writing an article to defend to defend uh, you know the, the 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 reputation of Muhammad. Uh, <clears throat> this is fatwa in front of me. Islam web dot net fatwa number nine nine sorry one 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 nine zero three a guy is saying that some people they say that Aisha she was 18 hmm? Aisha she was 18 
And actually, I uh, I came through this article. Uh, uh, you know, uh, they are trying themselves. Uh, they are posting the whole article about Aisha. She was eighteen. You see, as you see here, this is in Arabic. So they are saying that Aisha, obviously, she was eighteen, etc. Here, the scholar answering. The guy is calling the scholars, asking them for answer. Which one is the correct one? Is it six? Or it is 18. The answer is here. He says there is many. They got happy. And he think he got a knowledge. They are slandering the ones who they are saying this. But in fact, he is falling down of the cliff. Which means they are saying that those people who they are saying that, they are falling in the cliff. And now they say, and the one who came to the conclusion that Aisha, the day where the prophet, he did have intercourse with her. She was 18. It is a fabrication and it is not accepted. And for the following reason, اتفاق الأحاديث في الصحيحين وغيرهما بأن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم بنى بها وهي بنت تسع سنوات Translation all the hadith which is sahih that this that this this guy in titan tv is posting for you an article reading from there says the narration the narration it says that the narrate the narrator is not Wait, who is the one who said that <laughs> who is the one who said that this is not sahih who is the donkey who told you that you are copying an article made by a donkey that will make you a donkey too if you do so those are the scholars. You can contact them. This is the website. Let me post it for you guys. I will post it in the link. You can read the rest. They are the, and then they are quoting for you the hadith, which is sahih. Not a single one of them. It is not sahih. It says, read with me carefully. Uh, all a hadith in the the sahih, the, the sahih books, and etc., which mean and even more says that the prophet he did have intercourse with her when she was nine years old so he married her at the age of six but he did have intercourse at nine uh and then uh he continues saying that he this the one who made this article he, he fabricate and he claim that uh, uh asma the sister of aisha she was 10 years old than Aisha. And he said, there is nobody agree with this. And we will, we will show you. Then number two, Aisha herself is the one who told the story. She is the one who narrated the story. And then he continued. And he says, and he when when the prophet died, she was eighteen. And then he continued, and in the previous hadith, it's confirming that the prophet he did marry her, or sorry, he have intercourse with her, at the age of nine. Because Aisha, she confirmed her age even when he died, which was eighteen, which is. In the beginning of Hijra, which means the immigration, it was nine years. The one who made this article, he claimed that Aisha, she was born before the prophet was or became a prophet <laughs> by four years. And this is proven to be a lie from a Zahabi, the, the Imam a Zahabi. Allah plus, plus him. And the book of Sir Al-A'lam, Al-Nubala. Where Aisha, she said that she was one of those who were uh, 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 born after Islam, in the time where Islam was exist. And even confirming that it's a lie by Al-Hafiz, Ibn, Ibn Hajar, in the book of Al-Isaba. And he said she was born and he meant Aisha. After the Prophet became a Prophet by four years or five years. So how this idiot, he says she was born five years after that. 
<laughs> and then here they quote for you from the book of the Sierra. Anyway, the article is long. I'm going to post the link for you. So this is this is the Muslim scholars website. Not even a single scholar he say that this is a fabricated hadith or it is daif. As you see, this is Sahih al-Bukhari. Do you see anywhere it says daif? Anybody see the word daif there? Because even remember, by the way, even the daif is still accepted. It does not funk. The donkeys who keep saying that daif is not accepted, they are donkeys. They have no idea what they are talking about. Another website. Let me give you the first one. This is the first link. This is the website. Please copy it and open it and confirm yourself if I am reading for you a lie. Now, another, another, another. <laughs> another one. Another disaster, my friend. Uh, you see, the problem is when somebody is bankrupt, bankruptcy law is what is going to save him. So they try to fabricate saying that it does not say that, brother. This is a fabricated hadith. A brother, this is not a true brother. Who is the one who said that? Give me the name of the scholar who said that this is not a true age. Where do you get this from? There's no answer. Uh, let me see. All right. This is another website. The website is, let me show you. Do you see the address? This is a very, very Islamic website, not my website. All right. You know what? Let me see if I can translate, if I can use a, a Google translation. Uh, maybe we can read together. Better just me reading for you. Um, how we can translate with Google? Hold on. Uh, translate page translation. Okay. Hmm. Anyone knows how to trans to how to open a translation? You see, I'm posting the link here. It's not coming right. I mean, it's not uh, how to uh, to activate the translation in in uh, Google. I'm trying to find out how we can do that. Mm, okay, translate to English. Here we go. I found it. Let us see. Bingo. Respond to the marriage of a prophet, the prophet peace upon him, uh, Aisha and her age 18 years. For sure, the translation will not be accurate. All right. So the question, I read in a newspaper article uh, uh, entitled The Young Journalist Correct Imam Flags Thousands of Mistakes. The article summarized the following point. The case of the prophet peace upon him married uh, to the mother of the believers, which means Aisha at the age of six. So this is the claim. All right, and then they are saying that she was when she married to him, she was 18. Answer Praise be to Allah. Firstly, firstly, the Sahih hadith that the Prophet, peace upon him, healed Aisha, me Allah, placed with her when she was six years old, entered for nine years old, brother. This is Sahih hadith. Do you see, guys, where they say here, this is a scholars. 
So this guy who do not know Arabic, who was obviously he is under the influence of some Abdul, who is trying to say to us that those who reported this, not even a single scholar agree with them. Don't call me please now. I said no Christian will call me please. No Christian. No Christian. Let us finish. Why people don't listen? And they are reporting for you the hadith after hadith and not even a single one of them is a weak. This is why they are quoting the hadith because it's not weak. It's not rejected. And here the refutation in front of you. First, second, third, number four, number five, and all, all the, 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 the reference. So when they try to, to make a fabrication and it doesn't work, they, you know, they just expose themselves. Right? Why the Muslims scholars don't agree with those who say she was 18? I mean, what? why is going to hurt them to say no, she was six years old? You know what I mean? Okay, if it's six years, if she was 18, they will agree if, if there is really there is any proof. So claiming that the hadith is uh, not accurate, it is fabricated, this is a joke. We are talking about Sahih al-Bukhari, Sahih Muslim, all the books of Sahih are six, by the way, the, not only Sahih al-Bukhari and Sahih Muslim. And as you see, not a single one of those, it says that it is weak. Al-Bukhari, Al-Bukhari, Al-Bukhari. Sahih Muslim. <laughs> so where they come with this, that that she, you know, she like this is a, uh, this is not a true hadith, brother, and this is a fabricated brother, and this guy who narrated this is a brother. All of this is a fabrication, and I do not need to to prove it. Here we go. I showed you what the Muslims themselves responding to those lies. The Muslims themselves. Because the Muslims today, and I'm talking, talking about general Muslims, who have a little more morality left, trying to make Islam appeal. They are trying to be smarter than the, the Muslim scholars. So they say, if we say to the people that the Prophet, he did marry her at this age, well, obviously he's a, he's a Buddhophile. But as you see, there's nowhere it says that this hadith is rejected. This is Sahir Bukhari, not even a single comment. All the real scholars, agree that this is the correct age not even a single scholar say it is not you cannot find one so you can make a 10 you know you see when the muslims they made those articles to refute this lie you need to ask yourself why muslims are fighting muslims saying it's a lie and the one is talking the one is making the article about 18 is a journalist and the one who is making the article to prove that it was six is a scholar, a big shake, <laughs> a journalist. <laughs> like today, somebody uh, uh, sent me a video uh, of a guy. I'm not going to say his name. He's not even worth it. Uh, the, 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 the Christian Prince, Abdul, if you want to debate me, call me. I'm live on air. Don't you see? Even I'm not asking uh, Christians to call so I can give a, a, a chance to a Muslim to call us. Stop talking to yourself and call me. You want to debate me? What are you waiting for? There's a guy, he's saying, so Christian Arabs are your authority on God? This is stupid of you to say, Mr. King. Who said Arab Christian have authority on God? 
you are being you are speaking like a donkey now nobody have a thought you on God Call me and show me how you can prove yourself. Who want to do it? Who want to do it? Who have the courage to do it? Does it say here Sahih? Does it say here Sahih, brother? The Muslim, they Sahih. In their website, they say the Hadith is Sahih. But it is not Sahih, brother. <laughs> this is not Sahih, brother. But it says there Sahih. So what we will do now? Who is the one who told you that, that this narration is not accepted? A Abdul who made an article? Hello? Hello. Are you there? Hello? Yes. Hello. What? Hello. I hear you. Go ahead. Uh, I, I don't hear you well. I don't know why. It's all right. No it's problem. Reason. Maybe you, oh. have a, you have a slow uh, connection. So what? Uh, how I can help you? Now, now I hear you. Thank you so much. Could you please? I want to ask you about. I've heard about you um, debating with um, Muslim. Uh, I mean, um, debater guys. His name is um, Nadir Ahmed, right? My friend, don't, don't don't waste my time. If you want, let him call me. If you have this guy, if he is around under the table next to you, let him call me. Is he there? Uh, he's not next to me. Okay, it doesn't I matter. Okay, don't waste my time. Don't waste my time. Let, he, let me let, guys. Don't tell me somebody want to debate you. I'm just saying, whoever want to debate me, call me. Don't tell me there's a guy. His name is Potato Tomato. If he is a man, whoever he is, don't tell me his name. Call me. I'm live on air. We are waiting for hours. Keep saying, who want to call me? I think this is the same guy, the one who called himself Nader Ahmed. He is using a, a, a voice changer to call me and to speak about his name. This guy is obsessed with his name. He wants his name to be mentioned. So he he don't dare to call me. So he mentioned he used a voice software to change his name. What is that? Shame on you. Be a man and call me. As you see, Islamic website saying that this is a Sahih Hadith. So you don't go and they bring me an article written by Abdul saying those narration is not a true narration. And then when you say to me that in the Quran, brother, chapter 64, you know, uh, 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 64, verse number four, it says that, uh, brother, only Ibn Abbas, and we cannot find that of Ibn Abbas. My friend, who said only Ibn Abbas, he said that? Who said that? Who is the stupid he said to you that this is only in Ibn Abbas? We can find this in every interpretation. Hello. Hello. Are you there? Oh, read with me. This is not Ibn Abbas. This is Tafsir al Tabari. Tafsir al Tabari, value number 23. Page number. Let us go down. Let us go down. Let us go down. Uh huh. Let us see. Uh, all right. Let us see what it says. Hmm. واللائي لم يحضن يقول وكذلك عدد اللائي لم يحضن من الجوار الصغار from the young little girls if they if they if they are divorced after they have intercourse this is not ibn abbas this is tafsir al tabari
do you want us to show you different interpretation brother forget about a tabari brother we can go to anyone you want which one you want a tabari maybe is not a good guy i don't like a tabari let us go to al kurtubi brother tafsir al kurtubi al jami' li ahkam al quran volume number 18 and the page number in the front of you you can read in the screen all right let us go down hmm. let us see what al jalalain al qurtubi sorry he will say brother all right let us go down <clears throat> And by the way, brother, let me read for you, as long as you Muslims you like to talk about Sahih and weak. This is Ibn al-Arabi. He says, it is allowed in Islam that a woman, she can be pregnant and her son inside her belly for five years. Even it is allowed, or which means is accepted, that the woman, she can be pregnant for 10 years and even more. And this is, says, وَهُوَ sahih, And this is Sahih. Do you see it? Only Islam is the stupid religion believe that a baby can be inside his mother for more than 10 years. Do you see it? Let us continue, brother. Where he speak about, let us see, 10 years and more. <laughs> uh, Actually, here. Here we go. This is, guys, this is at Al 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 Kurtubi. Did Al Kurtubi say this is a speak about the little young ones? Let us see. Read together, brother. You know what? I'm going to copy paste in Google Translation, brother. Can we do that, brother? Huh? You go by article, brother. Let me show you how article work, brother. Hmm. This is Al Qurtubi in the front of us, page number one five two, one five two. I will copy. Let us go to Google Translation. Where is Google Translation? Maybe we can insert the link here. Let us see. Uh, Google Translation. Hmm. Let us do this. Hold on. I mean, I'm trying to tr translate for you guys what I can do. Uh, pa, 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 pa. Okay, translate to English. All right. Now, for sure, the translation will not be accurate, but it's okay. I mean, it's just better than nothing. All right. Hmm. Explanation of Al Qurtubi. Uh, where is the word now? Let us see. I'm trying to find where is the where is the, the English now. Here we go. Uh, from you see, translation is messed up. Like you know, several of them are menstruation when they are young. You know, they it's talking about the, the little ones who they cannot they don't have menstruation because they are too young. And here. Talking about that those women, 
like they come in the NASA you know, the translation is messed up so in al qurtubi in all, all all interpretation it's mentioned that they are those who they are young very young so who is the one who told you that this is only in ibn abbas then he said ibn kathir let us go to ibn kathir ibn kathir do he say ibn kathir that they are young let us see ibn kathir <laughs> Uh, oh boy, Ibn Kathir. <clears throat> Where is Ibn Kathir? Mm -hmm. Where is the interpretation for the verse anyway? Why we are here? Ibn Kathir is trans. This is a different verse. Maybe you need to go back. Yeah, this is a different verse. I don't know why it's taking me to this. Uh, I click just a link and it's taking me here. This is not for the verse we want. Let us see. Mm -hmm. Okay, let us do this. We can go to Ibn Kathir actually in un English, right? Ibn Kathir in English. Hold on. It's funny when somebody try to claim knowledge. You don't even speak the language and you are reading an article made by Abdul and you think that they are telling the truth and even the Muslim themselves they are getting them busted Muslims getting Muslim busted and the one who is getting the Muslims Abdul busted is the scholars not an idiot who do not know what he's talking about this is Ibn Kathir <clears throat> okay guys does it say here the same for the young <laughs> Does it say that? Ibn Kathir. Hello. Not everyone who speaks in the internet, he come with knowledge. Those are copy paste people. Should I change, like show you more? I can show you until tomorrow the interpretation of Muslims and all of them, they agree that this is about the young girls. Do you remember, guys, the hadith where Muhammad, he asked a guy, why you marry a widow? Shouldn't you marry a little child? Do you remember? Is that Sahih or Daif? <laughs> we need to go and ask Titan TV. Funny guy. A guy, he said, I married a woman. Huh? Okay, the translation here, by the way, they don't translate to you the word young, young little girl. If we go to different translation, just to show you the same hadith, the same story. Look here, the same story. How come here the word marry young girl? So you play with her. How how young she is going to sport with you? She is a kid. What do you mean you want to sport with her? Play with her? When I get married, Allah Messenger said to me, what type of lady you are married? I replied, I have married a, murder, a matron. <clears throat> he said, why you don't have liking for a virgin and for fondling them? What the heck? Fundling them? This is a prophet of God talking? Jabir said, Oh Allah Messenger, why don't, uh, 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 why don't you marry a young girl so that you may play with her? My friend, people when they get married from a woman, they don't play with her. She is a woman. She is not a kid. Who is the wife you want to play with her? How old is she, the wife you are going to play with her? 
if there is any lady here she want to marry me and so we can play together huh we are going to play together bride and the groom hello any any girl here <laughs> Any Muhammadan he can call, no problem. Please, if you are a Muhammadan, but don't use voice changer like this guy Nader Ahmad, the coward. He is using a voice changer just to mention his name. Here we go. We mention your name. This guy is obsessed with his name. He likes to mention his name. He want to make himself like important, but he don't dare to call me. Who is the Abdul? Wanna call me? If there is any Muslim, she wanna call me and play with me. Hello. And here you notice how evil this man. I mean, the guy is happily married and he is married for a real woman. Why? What? What is the business of Muhammad to seduce him and tempt him, tempt him to go and marry another woman who is a child or a wife? What's your business? Imagine you are married and I come to you and I say, hey, listen, why you don't marry a little young one? Don't you think this is the devil himself? What's your business? Obviously, he is trying to make this man hate the wife he have and look for another little girl. And look, here in this story here, uh, this guy, his name is Jabir. He explained why he married a woman. Because he have already nine girls in the age, they are kids. His, his brother, he died and he left nine girls. So he wants someone to take care of them, not another child. A brother, sister. One of the companion brother, his name is Dabir. And Dabir, he was taking his camel. And the prophet, he come from behind him and tickle him, tickle, 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 tickle him. And he said to Dabir, uh, Dabir, why you are arresting yourself and going so quickly? Dabir answered the prophet, beat up him. He said to him, uh, because I'm a newly married brother. The prophet said to him, are you married to a young virgin or a previously married? I said, oh, Allah Messenger, with one who is previously married, where upon that brother, there is, please give the microphone to that lady, the blonde lady, the American lady, because always American lady, they ask good question. Yes. The American lady, which we paid her to ask, to ask the question. Yes. No, this one, we did not pay her, the other one. Yes, please. Thank you very much. So, brother, he said to him, I married to a previously married woman. Whereupon he said, which means the prophet put upon him, why don't you marry a young girl so that you could sport with her? And you know, we Muslims, we always sport with our wives. As an example, me, Zakir Naik, I play soccer with my wife every day because they are children, brother. So we play with them. Thank you very much. Do we have an Abdul? Hello? And here you will see that the guy he said to him, "Hello, hello, peace, peace, peace." Um, hey, Kalam, how are you? What happened, man? Who is who? Who? Which article you are reading for me, saying that those hadith are not correct and they are not uh, sahih? Where do you get this from? Uh, now, this is actually one of my original research. Um, you know, I've heard this topic be mentioned. I've seen loads of great Christian apologetics, um, you know, go ham and hard at this. And I said, okay, let me actually do my research because I'm a person, I'm not, you know, Muslim, I'm not Christian. I know, I know, but let, just... let us go, let us, let us cut the cake. Where, mm -hmm. you, where you got your reference that those hadith are not sahih? Okay, so I, um, I utilized uh, the science of hadith. So if my friend, you are... my friend, no, no, don't, don't, give me, give me the, the, the direct answer. Who is the scholar who said that those hadith are not sahih? Okay, so I myself uh, done the research myself. No, no you I... see, you yourself, you are a scholar. I'm asking you, my friend, who is the scholar who said that those hadith are not sahih? 
Okay, uh, let me finish, okay? So I myself done the research and um, my conclusion, my own personal research. My friend, you are not answering. I don't care for your conclusion with my respect to you. I want this scholar, the Muslim scholar who said that those, those hadith are not sahih. Okay, so the first person uh, that actually makes mention of this is Imam Malik. Imam, Imam Malik says Imam, that the, show, show me the hadith. It says that Imam Malik said that Aisha was not six years old. Um, he does not make mention of that. He says that the narrations coming from Hisham ibn Urwa. My friend, after... my friend, who care about Hisham ibn Urwa? We have many narration. The narration is not coming from Hisham ibn Urwa anyway. The narration okay. is coming from Aisha. Who said this? What is Hisham ibn Urwa in the hadith? Okay, so let me. I'm sharing my screen. I'm actually on my channel right now as well, live streaming. So if mm -hmm. I can just, um, you know, share it with my audience. I don't know if you're able to. No, you won't be able to see my screen. No at all. problem, my friend, my friend, my friend, uh, my, friend, my, friend my friend, my friend, my friend, my friend. This hadith is mentioned by many, many people. It's not. It's you don't like. No, it it does. No, it does. It does. It does. And as you all see, right. the Muslim scholars agree. Huh? Okay, with all respect, Chris Prince, let me just finish speaking, right? right. So we have, um, you know, the hadith, there is 19 different places in the Sahih Sitta, in oh, the okay. uh, six great books of, of hadith collections, right? Mm. Out of the 19, 14 of them trace back to Hisham ibn Ura, two of them traces back to um, Al-Amish, two of them trace back to Abu Ubaidah, and one of them traces back to Abu Salama ibn Abdul Rahman, mm -hmm. okay? So in seeing that, right, um, I've done my research on this, uh, utilizing the science of hadith, and it, we've come to the conclusion that the five categories of what makes a hadith sahih, all right, um, mm -hmm. which is, let me quickly tell you what the five categories are. Mm -hmm. It is to do with whether the narrations or the narrators, should I say, are reliable. Okay, and of let, let, us, let, us cut, let, let us cut this. Listen, do you see the screen? Do you see my screen? Um, I don't at present. Give me a second. Let me go on to your channel and have a look. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo, Christian Prince. Here we go. Okay, does it say Sahih? Uh, give me one second. I'm, it's just an ad that's playing right now. Give me one second. Okay, skip ad. And here we go. Um, we It says Sahih. Okay, at the so now yeah, what right. we will do? What would I do? No, no, um, what we will do. If it says Sahih, I mean, you, you know, you see, you, you look like you do not know what Islam is about. When, when the Muslim, they say that there's narration of a person is not sahih, does not mean that hadith itself is not sahih. As an example, the one who recited the Quran himself, he was accused to be a fraud, corrupt, a thief, and a liar. And the same as his father, the Quran you read today is Quran of Hafs. I can show you right now. Actually, I did it in your program. Do you remember? Of course, of okay. course. So Hafs himself is rejected in the hadith accepted in the Quran, correct? Correct. Okay, so why they accept the Quran? That's very. That's a good question. Okay, very so no, question. no, no. You see, the, 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 the good question is here. Is no, we cannot take somebody says because Malik, he said this guy, the, the, you know, the, the Muslim scholars, they have to agree that this hadith is rejected or accepted and they agree that it is accepted. All Islamic, Fatwa, you can go and search right now. Not even an, Isl an Islamic center who have scholars agree that those hadith are not sahih. So, and my friend, don't, 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 don't let them fool you and say to you, Oh, this guy, you know, there is somebody said that he's a liar. All of them, they are liars. Who said that Al Bukhari is not a liar? Who said that Muhammad is not a liar? Who said that Aisha is not a liar? All of them, they are liars. So my friend, when the Muslims, they say that they are lying at each other and lying about their prophet, that's not my problem. That is their problem. Same time, here we go. We have the liar saying that this is a Sahih Hadith. What we will do with it? Indeed. So let me, if, I'm, if I have the possibility to actually speak, I don't disagree with you um, in terms of it's been labeled as Sahih, mm -hmm. right? Um, but the problem is that a lot of people are under the false conceptualization that everything inside of Sahih Bukhari or Sahih Muslim is actually Sahih. And that's usually just the laymen. They actually have that opinion. But the actual scholars, and I'm reading from a book now called the... Um, let me just quickly get it. So it's called the Textbook of Hadith Studies on page 38. It says in there, thus it is noted that uh, of the total of 400 or 430 or so of al-Bukhari's transmitters, only about 80 have been questioned or labeled as weak. Whereas of the total of 620 narrators of Muslim, the uh, critiques have raised questions over hundreds. Okay, my friend, let us, let us get it short. Let us get it short. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Show me the scholar who say that this hadith specifically in Sahih al-Bukhari is not accepted. 
Okay, so if I could just finish, it says here about 89 of Al Bukhari's hadith My have friend. been identified to have some defect, whereas in Muslim collections, such as such hadith have been numbered at 100. Okay, so over here we can see that we have at least 89. First of all, first of all, who is the one who number those 100? Who are they? Okay. So if we go inside of the book, there is the footnote which alerts us to exactly who these scholars actually are, who says these things. I'm just going to just put it out there to what, get people. What book mind. you are reading from? This is uh, this is from a textbook of hadith studies. My friend, this is not a scholar book. This is a book about the hadith. Somebody came in with his opinion, saying, "I say this. This is Sahih al Bukhari. I can play for you right now. I can show you tons of thousands of videos speaking about how accurate Sahih al Bukhari." Sahih al-Bukhari is the second book after the Quran. So anyone want to say it is not true, he have a problem to show us where he got this from. It's okay. not... Well, the, the, not, you not, see, not every narration in Sahih al-Bukhari My, is my friend, my friend, my friend, my friend. First of all, Sahih al-Bukhari is one of six narration of six authentic hadith according to the Muslim Sunni. Secondly, yes. in your video, you said that the one who says in the Quran, marrying from young is Ibn Abbas, right? Who said that said Ibn Abbas? All the scholars agree about this. Okay, can we just stick to one point? And then yeah, we are, on? because we have to connect. You see, Quran, we give you Quran. Are you going to say the Quran is weak too? Okay, so what about, stick to what one about point, the hadith? Just... What about the hadith we just read that the guy, his name is Jabir, and Muhammad is asking him to go and marry a child? I'm with you, Christian Prince. Well, if we could just stick to one topic and move on from there, at least we can conclude without actually conflating issues. So, um, as we were speaking about earlier on, right? So mm -hmm. we have in there, we're out the 19 different hadiths. Five of them are coming from Hisham ibn Urwa. And we can go, we can open up right now onto Islam web and we can see what the actual scholars had to say. We can go and check it Who out. See what Matthew actual and had to say. Who what Yaqub ibn Shaib had I to say. I just show, I don't know, I don't know how, how, how long you are with me. I just okay. showed you that what the Muslims refutation to the lies for those who say she was 18 and she was not 16. It is the Muslims yeah. who are refuting the Muslims, my friend. Okay, that's a separate argument. I haven't put forward an argument to say what age Aisha was. I'm simply putting forward the argument that the hadith is not reliable. It's a weak hadith it's, that should who, not be Who said it's weak? Who is the one who said it's weak? My I'm, friend, I'm, I'm, my, my, my friend, my friend, my friend, my friend. When the Muslim scholars, they say that this is a sahih hadith, and then you get somebody else saying to you, this is a weak hadith. Who is the stupid here? Okay, so, so because somebody has gathered up a hadith, right, and said that they've entitled, they themselves have entitled their book, uh, well, actually, they haven't even entitled their book as such, but let's just pretend that they've entitled their book Sahih. It doesn't mean that when somebody else comes along now and actually critiques their work, that everything in there is actually Sahih. It's, it's kind of being very pumped to think to yourself that I am correct and everybody else must be wrong. Every human being is fallible. So therefore, um, uh, this is uh, not Bukhari what the Muslims believe, my friend. This is not what the Muslims believe. This is not what the Muslims believe. Because if the Muslims believe in this, first of all, then they will not accept a book. It's called Sahih al-Bukhari or Sahih Muslim. Because who is Sahih al-Bukhari? To be able to be having a book, it's called Sahih. How a person can remember thousands of hadith unless he is a liar. This is impossible. Nobody can remember by word, by name, by details. It's impossible. And you, you should agree with me, right? Like I now, if I tell you, if I tell you the names of uh, a bunch of friends, and they, we sit together, and then you go, and you, you remember the story, and you remember the names, and you remember every word I say, and we are talking about thousands and thousands of stories. That is impossible. There's no brain can handle it. Okay, so I just want to quickly just let you know as well, right? Because I know everybody's underneath the false conceptualization that this book, Sahih Bukhari, is Sahih. Right. Um, and to my knowledge, it, it, it wasn't actually even called Sahih Bukhari itself. It's other people that have given it the title Sahih. Mm. Right. Mm. It originally, it was something called the Jamia, the, the collection of of hadiths. Okay. Why they give it? Why, why they give it this title? Those people. Because they themselves believe that it was the most uh, authentic book after um, after the Quran. Right, okay. so they believe that it was the most authentic. Now, of course, human let, beings. Let me ask can... you, uh, uh, Kalam. When what, what, we... the, the, the website I just showed, those scholars in Islamfatwa.com, etc., why they are saying that those are absolutely Sahih hadith? Do you think that you have more knowledge than them about who is uh, Sahih narration or he's not? I would say evidently. 
Do you think they are better than you or you are better than them? I would say evidently I prove based upon my research and my evidence that my conclusion proves to be true. So therefore my my results. So you are the one who don't speak Arabic. You know more than the scholars who speak Arabic and they are Muslims. When it comes to, when it comes to this point itself, if I've done a research on this. What research? You did not do any research. What is research? Because my friend, you know, in order to, to refuse somebody hadith, you have to refuse all his hadith. So now okay. if we search for this name, is all his hadith is rejected or only this is the hadith they don't want like it? No, it's the hadiths. Okay, according to Malik, yeah, <laughs> uh, which I should bring up on the, I should really just bring this up real quickly, okay. right? Mm. According to Malik, he says that, um, you know, after he moved, you know, Hisham ibn Murwa moved to Iraq when he was around, around 71. We do not accept any of his hadiths, okay? Everything from that point on is weak. He was an okay, old man. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Guys, this guy, after he moved to Iraq, he became a liar. Before he go to Iraq, he was honest. Yes, and okay. that's why no. How you know, and how you know that this hadith is written before, after he moved to Iraq? Because none of the Medinian scholars, my such friend, as, none of the Medinian don't scholars. Tell me none of my, have, no, tell me how they knew. If nobody even knows when Muhammad was exist, no, there's no date, there's no years, and even the Muslim don't agree about the date of his birth as a year. How they agreed. knew? How they knew that when this I, guy I, I, he we, went to Iraq? I don't have any like disagreements with you on that. But I just want to keep to okay. the topic. Right? So you see, so but get, look, no, 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 look, look, but okay. what, what, what can I wait, wait? You see, you said something very important. We have to focus with it a little bit, okay? So now, if we have here, if we have a person is not approved, either he is a liar or he is not. He cannot be honest when he was here, and he is dishonest when he went there. That is not logical, and nobody will believe in this garbage. Okay. Imagine I say Kalam is an honest person when he was in New York. But became a liar when he went to uh, California. Who is going to believe in this? Okay, so I don't think if I get one minute just to speak. Okay, just one minute. That's all I'm asking you for. Mm. Okay? I don't think anybody calls him a liar. Nobody says he's kazad in any of the. Um, so what you he know, is? So what he is? Before. What he is? All they simply say. Okay, let me just quickly read out what the scholars say. It's mm. in Arabic and English. It says here, Yaqub ibn Shaiba says uh, he Hisham is highly reliable. Okay, highly reliable. His narratives is, is acceptable, except what he narrated after moving to Iraq. Malik ibn Anas now says near enough the same thing. Okay, he now says, um, you know, he, he basically says the same thing that he does different recitations. He narrates um, Ursul or, or Mursal hadiths basically mm. on behalf of his father. Then you have Sah Sahel ibn Abi Saleh said that he's mingled and changed things up and his memory, um, you know, decreased or, or went downhill. Um, in his old age, then you have other people as well, um, you know, such as who do we have here? We have the people of Iraq, Mama, all say that, you know, he 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 started to be confused when he started narrating in Iraq. Hmm. So it's after a certain period of time, hmm. he started narrating certain things, which the earlier scholars or the people of Quraysh themselves never had any knowledge about. And that's why they say they rejected everything from him at the point of Iraq because he was an old man that possibly went senile or possibly lost his memory and started confusing things. Therefore, you never see in, in the Muatta of Ibn Malik, that's the only of the seven books, right, that you don't see Aisha being nine years of age. If you go into the uh, fiqh of uh, Abu Hanifa, they tell you that a, a, uh, a child becomes an adult at the age of 18 years of age. This is according to Abu let Hanifa. Let me ask you, let me ask you, have you ever heard of an imam, his name is al Hafiz? Al sorry, Al Hafiz, Al Imam Al Hafiz. No, I haven't. Okay, he confirmed that she was six years old, and even he confirmed that at the time of Khaybar, she was at the age uh, seven. What uh, about? No, I think I think it's fourteen at Khaybar. They say no, according no, no. to Ibn Hajar. H hold on, hold on. No, no. Actually, they say they say they are saying to you uh, 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 that Khaybar Khaybar was. It was seven. Now they say that Aisha, she was at the, at the attack of Khaybar. She was at the age of 14. And at that time, she don't even have her period. Yes. And okay. she was playing with dolls. All right. All right. And she was playing with dolls. Okay, hold on. Yes. So now, uh, uh, as long as they are confirming that at that time, she was still 14, then we can just count how many years from Khaybar backward and we will find the age of Aisha. Definitely. I, I, okay. I won't, I so won't here we go. Okay, here you go. If, I, if, I, read, if, I, if I read Al Khattabi, let me read. Let me show you on the screen. Here we go. Qal al Hafiz. 
قال الخطابي and this is not the one you don't like the one they say he's a liar okay it was allowed for Aisha to play for she is not mature I said to confirm this uh, about about its possibility because Aisha she was by the time of Khaybar the attack of Khaybar not Khaybar the attack of Khaybar at the age of 14 years old and maybe she complete 14 or she pass or even close so he's not sure if 14 past 14 13 going on 14 is something like that and he say but in the attack of Tabuk she was for sure much sure okay and this is and this is he continue this Qatan فيترجح رواية من قال في خيبر so it is uh, it is more it's more uh, reliable to say that it is about her age when she was in Khaybar. Uh, كانت سنت سبع. Okay, so he is saying Khaybar was in the year of seven. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now if we go and we calculate the years, what do, that what that will make Aisha? Yeah. So again, Christian mm -hmm. Prince. Um, okay. Unfortunately. You know, I'm taking an academic approach. Looking My friend, at we are taking, we are, we are quoting for you reference from scholars. You know, not, the, I'm not going to No, no, right. the problem I'm is, what the problem is, you are quoting what Muslims, they claim about a guy, and they themselves, they say that this guy is very trustworthy when they want. When they want, they say he is not a trustworthy. Because everybody will, will laugh if you say, Christian Prince, he is, honest when he is in the kitchen but he is not honest after he moved to the living room there's nobody will accept such a garbage my friend this is not academic this is right. this is an, this is an opinion of a guy maybe he is jealous from this guy maybe they don't like him maybe he's okay. from different sect maybe they are trying to to uh, to to, uh, to to put him down because this is exists always in the islamic history as an example there's many writers they speak against al-bukhari even some of them, they accuse him that he is not even a Muslim. Uh, even some, they say he never exists. Even they, some, they say how he can remember and he can memorize even when he was a blind. So there's tons of his stories. Everybody come with his story. Now, if, no we, read, if we read together, my friend. The okay, can I, can I just get two minutes? Yeah. I just want two minutes, okay? So two minutes. So, you know, first of all, I just want to make this clear, right? Mm -hmm. um, in terms of tafsirs, in terms of commentaries from scholars and so forth, right? Mm -hmm. I'm not going to deny that they believe that Aisha was nine years of age when the consummation took place. I'm not even going to deny that most mis Muslims, you know, no matter how perverse this idea is, right, actually believe and acknowledge that Aisha was nine years of age when Muhammad consummated the marriage. They even go as far as to say that they believe that Aisha was six years old mm -hmm. when the Prophet was having some type of sexual or a dream with her about the angel and so forth. I'm not going to deny all those things. I'm going to say, yes, this is what it says, and this is what their commentary says about this, okay? Mm -hmm. Push that aside for a hot minute, right? Because that's what Muslims say. That's a Muslim argument. I'm not having it, okay? The argumentation I'm having is an academic one. I'm going from a chronological perspective, okay? Is it as though what, what actually happened during the lifetime of the Prophet, what happened during the, um, you know, the following years of the Prophet with the Sahabas, what happened with the Tabayin? What, what does have to do with what does have to do with the topic we are talking about? And what happened with the fiqh, uh, the the fakia, the the, the, the um, juris, this, the um, jurisprudence uh, scholars, and so forth? Right? How did things actually evolve with the idea that I should? My, my was friend, you are quoting this. for me. You are talking too much, but you are not saying to me what does have to do with this. This hadith okay. is approved by Muslims. So, okay, and so I'm all the Muslims. You know, if we go, if we go right now, if we go right now, me and you, to the official okay. government website of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, do you think it's for their benefit to say? Muhammad he did marry at the age of six, but he's not. Do you think they are not academic? But you are the guy who do not know how to read Arabic or to write Arabic. You know what academic mean. Do you okay. do you think that the one who give PhD in Islam and teach in Islamic University in the city of Mecca and Al Madina, they are not academic, but you are the one who do not know two words in Arabic, you are academic. Yeah, because I've spoken to a lot of people. Okay, we, we, we have nothing to talk about, guys. This guy he think he's, he's no, there is no more to talk. Thank you. This guy, he thinks that he is academic and the scars of Islam, they are donkeys. Thank you very much. Uh, there's nothing to, to, to argue about. The hadith in the front of me had nothing to do with the name even you mentioned. Is it academic or not? When we show you what the Muslim believe 
from the official government website of the Kingdom of Jordan or the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. And you know, and I know, and everybody knows that nobody dare to fabricate something because it can cause you death. They will kill you. When we see tons of hadith repeating the same story, it have nothing to do with the name you mentioned to me. You are stuck with that name. But there's many stories from other names. What they will do with them. When you see an article written by Muslim scholars, not Muslim Abdul who made, and then he says to me, this is my own conclusion. Who are you? Academic study. What academic study? How you can get the, the time when this guy, he went to Iraq, and how this guy can be a liar in Iraq, but he's a truth for in Mecca or Al-Medina. Who can believe in such a garbage? That is a joke. So if you want to talk in academic, you don't tell me this is my conclusion. So now we have the, the conclusion of the academic of Mr. Kalam versus the scholars of Islam. When I asked him, name for me one person, he said that this hadith is not accepted. He did not give me anyone. He just said to me, there's some, they say that this guy, after he moved to Mecca or so moved to Iraq, he became not honest. <laughs> <laughs> that is funny anyway thank you Kalam you know sorry I hang up on you because I don't want to waste my time because you keep saying to me this is my conclusion keep your conclusion even Muslims don't agree with, with you and Muslims they are they are they have article written by the scholars it says refuting the lies that Aisha she was 18 when she married the prophet confirming that she was six years old and I post the links, everybody can go and check them out. Actually, there's many of them, they are in English. If you want to come with your own conclusion, you see, when I debate Muslims, I don't come with my conclusion. I show them reference, I show them proofs. And my conclusion is something for me. I can add it later for those who want to listen to me for what I say. But if I want to prove something to a Muslim, I don't say my conclusion is. It is what the Muslims believe. And when we say what the Muslims believe, it's not a guy who's making an article today. You see, for 1400 years, not even a single Muslim, he dared to say that this hadith or those hadith or those stories are not true. But today, because it's bringing shame and it's a disaster, so they start fabricating stories. And even all of us renew that the Muslims they love to defend their prophet like this website we are reading from where it's confirming that Aisha she was six for sure they are not people who hate Muhammad they will kill you for the sake of Muhammad but yet they are confirming that this is a true story nobody says none of those scholars says oh we are not going to take this guy Arwa or we will not take a Zahabi or we will not take this guy and this guy. They never mentioned that. For they approve his hadith. Uh, actually, Ibn Kathir, I saw in the Kalam video, he said he mentioned Ibn Kathir. I did not watch it all. I was screwing around. He said, uh, Ibn, we will go to Ibn Kathir. Even Ibn Kathir. Ibn Kathir, he says, and he said, and this is confirmed by the Sahih. Why Ibn Kathir did not notice that this is a weak hadith? And not only that, he said, which is not, nobody disagree about it. So we will get a guy who live in England or in America, and then he will, uh, no, no, uh, uh, Kalam. I will give you I will give you time you know just to to close this topic so what we will do now Kalam do you think you are the right one are you sure you are the right one and the scars of Islam are the stupid ones I would say that my sources speak for themselves well you have no so sources my friend you, you could not find me one hadith one person saying that this hadith is fabricated okay I'm saying that the person himself right who my friend the you know no 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 don't tell me that show me one scholar say that this hadith is fabricated 
Can okay. you? If I can, I show. If I show you, Ibn Kathir says that this hadith is mursal, which therefore makes it weak. My would friend, my friend, I have Ibn Kathir in the front of me. Okay, so if he says that, would you accept it? Okay, show me what Ibn Kathir he said. Let us let us read together. Give me a second. I will have to just um, find it first, mm. and then I'll, I'll come back. Just give me a minute. Mm. Okay. All right. Do -do -do. <laughs> Do you see the page in front of me? No, I can't because I'm just doing this. Mm. Okay. Okay, so um, this is on Siratul, sorry, Sirat al Nabawiya. Okay, actually, let me pull this up um, on my channel via my um, uh, uh, thing. Actually, no, sorry, let me just quickly show it. Okay, so it says here, what aura here is, what aura stated here is Mersal, incomplete, as we mentioned above, but in its content, it must be judged as Mutasil, uninterrupted. This mm -hmm. is because this is so because Urwa, the narrator, is transmitting a conversation to which he was not a party to, as is clear from the text. Also, he was too young to have witnessed this meeting, and this is in reference to um, you know the the meeting of Aisha and their marriage and so forth. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is what Ibn Kathir says in his my uh, friend Ibn Kathir in the book of Al Bidaya wa Nihaya, mm -hmm. verse number three, page number one six one. It says the opposite. Okay. Uh, well, then he could be contradicting himself. I'm gonna uh, for for my audience. No, I did not see, confirm what you are saying there. You see, gonna, because because Ibn Kathir he report an opinion of others, but this is his opinion. You see, when Ibn Kathir he report for you something, so Ibn Kathir sometimes he say, and some they say etc cetera, etc. Cetera, so he's reporting opinion of others. But here you will see, and this is not my statement. I'm not. I'm not the one. I'm showing the screen. I'm not the one even is, uh, who wrote this article. This is. This is the website. Here we go. Let me go up. Al Islam Sualum wa Jawab. Al Mushraf al Am al Shaykh Muhammad Salih al Munjid. This is a big Shaykh in Saudi Arabia. He's very well known. All right. And this is Islam, Islam K, K A, Fatwa, that onfo, that com. That, sorry, that onfo. All right. You see the website? All right. So he is the one who's quoting. I'm not, I'm not the one who's quoting. So I'm just showing you what they say. So my friend. You are just confusing yourself about something is not exist and those scholars there is no way they will spend their time and no they, they will not even dare to mention what they are mentioning if it is not accepted because they will be humiliated and look here what he says uh, let me teach you something about islam the muslim they go by ijma what is ma mean so if the majority agree with it, it's mean it is ma'soom. What ma'soom mean? It's mean it's absolutely correct. Because Muhammad, he said that the nation will not agree in something wrong if the nation agree on it, all right? Which means the majority. And reported by a Tirmidhi. And then he says, uh, even in the Quran it says, Inna Allah la ummati ala dalala. So even the Quran says that Allah the story the prophet says that Allah will never let my nation agree in something wrong so this guy is confirming to you there is no way that all of us the majority agree with this because that would be a total contradiction with the teaching of the prophet where he says that Allah will not allow a deception to fail in my nation if the majority agree on something so here he continues saying كاتب المقال المذكور أوقعه جهله وتعصبه لقوله الباطل في كثير من الكذب والتدليس. Let me translate for you. The one who wrote this article, the same as your article, he is. I'm not. I'm not saying you are what he's saying. He's talking about the guy who made this article. He is an ignorant, and he is uh, like let us say uh, uh, fanatic, saying false and fabricating a lot of lies and deceiving, and that he is doing that. To be victorious by his fabrication or false fiction. And then look what he says. 
فمن ذلك مثلا ما ذكره عن ابن كثير في البدايه والنهايه hmm? look he just showing to you that some people they fabricate even about ibn kathir he says that he mentioned a lie about ibn kathir it's mentioned in the book of al bidayah and nihaya about women who they before they became muslims and he mentioned asma the daughter of abu bakr and aisha wa hiya saghira fakana islam haula fi thalath sanin so they are saying that the fabricated stories from ibn kathir is not even there and he said and we we could not find this in the book of Al Bidayah and Nihaya in the book of Nikathir. We could not find it. So Muslims they always do that. Okay. So if I okay. can get a chance, to, if I can get a chance to speak. And look, right look, now, look. Hold on, hold on. Do you remember we said me and you that the hadith mm -hmm. about when Aisha she was at the age of fourteen that she did not reach yet the the, the age of uh, 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 of menstruation. Yep, I'm okay. with you. All right. Here he says, and it's confirmed by the majority that Aisha was born four years after the Prophet became a Prophet. Is that good? Okay. Yeah, perfect. Okay. All That's right. wonderful. So now, oh, what you need to do, go and calculate the years between okay. Aisha's birth date. And this is not from this guy, Umar. Forget about this, uh, Urwa, sorry. Forget about this Arwa. Arwa is a liar. He is a shish kebab. All right. Go ahead and calculate what the age of 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 uh, Aisha, when she, you know what what, what like uh, Muhammad he was he was a prophet for four years already when Aisha is born, and then we go and see what happened in Khaybar, what year it was Khaybar, and then we can find the difference between them. And then right. he says, and all the all all the reference agree with no exception. All of them they agree. Huh? That Aisha she was. In, uh, 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 10 years uh, uh, older than Aisha, he's quoting the person, and then when he says, But that is not true, he said, uh, uh, The Imam al Zahabi he mentioned fi Sirat al Alam al Nubala, volume number three, page number 522, that Asma can't ascend to Aisha be better, Yashra, Sana, Intaha. Okay, well, a bit of a added my being a Thalatha, Thalatha, well, Ashur. And well, he's saying what what the word Bada mean? Bada it means between three to nine to, to ten. So anyway, this guy, if you want, I'm going to post for you this link in the in the chat. Go study it, search it, and see why those Muslim scholars they are saying and confirming that Aisha age was like this. And then you need to you know check yourself and see. I mean, obviously, uh, like uh, the only the only reason why they're saying that is because there's they've accepted the hadiths from Hisham ibn Urwa. My friend, was my, no friend, my friend, my Hisham, friend, my friend. No, 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 no. You see, you are stuck with it. This is your problem. You see, we are quoting things have nothing to do with the Urwa. We are talking I, about they, when Aisha they, is born, when 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 Khaybar, when Khaybar happened, those are not from Urwa. All right, can I can I just speak, right? The reason the the, the way that they're able to do these calculations is based upon the hadith of Hisham ibn Urwa. If there was no hadith saying that she was nine years old, can you show me how these scholars would have made that calculation? It's impossible. They're my friend, no, this. my friend, they, there's no connection between them because each one of them he report what a different a different incident. And as an example, they are not talking about when he married her. They are talking about that she was at that age when she still yet don't have her period. And they mention an incident which is a war with Khaybar. That's it. They are not mentioning Urwa. They have nothing to do with Urwa. What are you talking about? But the reason why they're saying that she hasn't had their period is based upon the hadith that's coming from Hisham. My friend, no, this is have nothing to do with that. This is the different report that Aisha she th th was. A, there was a question why Aisha she was allowed to play with her dolls. Okay, and where okay. does the hadith come from? About, okay, about my, Aisha my friend, my friend, my friend, my friend, my friend, my friend, my friend. In order to understand, let us say you ask me, like now, the whole topic is about what? About Aisha, she is six or not, right? So yeah, for yeah. sure we have to mention everything in connection. This is one religion, one name, one woman. So whatever, whatever in connection, we have to come with the conclusion. And how we can get that? We have to go and search all the books in, 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 the, in the shelves. So we cannot say because of Urwa, he mentioned that. Now we are talking about this. But that's the only this is not an excuse. Can... Same because time, my friend, same no time you said from anybody else. My, my friend, my friend, Kalam, was... Kalam. Go ahead. You Go said ahead. that they I, I are you, you said because those scholars they agree with the hadith of Arwa, correct? Correct. Okay, why they agree with him? 
because it's written with inside of Sahih Bukhari. My friend, no, 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 no. Don't you, don't, don't, don't you know? They, don't you know? Don't you know that those scholars of Islam, who they are big sheikhs, they are under a lot of watch from Muslims. Which means, if they say something false, they will lose their reputation and maybe they might get killed. Don't you know 100%. that? Hundred percent. You know how dangerous this business is, right? Yes. Okay. So why they want to defend the hadith when they should not defend it? Because this is the nastiness that they're doing in their country, such as Yemen. They're actually having sex with these nine, ten, my eleven friend, year old women. This is not girls. the reason. This is not a reason. This is not the reason. The, you see, <laughs> you are, you are, you know, I'm talking to you. You are a mature man. Actually, I like you. I respect you too. But let mm -hmm. let me let me talk to you, uh, Kalam, in, in different way. You know, this is not a reason to make a conclusion. This is religion. This is not my my opinion. This guy is not going to go and get married from six years old girl. And this is why he is making things up because if this is the case, the Muslims still will kill him. He have to come with reasoning, as you see. This is why he is he is not just saying, "Okay, it is how it is. You like it, you don't like it. I believe this." No, he's quoting for you reference after reference after reference after reference, and all of this to prove to you a point. And then you will find not even one Muslim. You see, there is there is a there is a guy. I don't know if you heard of him. He is a Muslim cleric, big scholar in Saudi Arabia. Now he is facing 37 account of death for seeing a dream. What is the crime? He saw a dream. In the dream, he saw Muhammad. Muhammad, he said something to him. For that reason, they are going to crucify him, put nails in his hands, cut his feet, cut his hands, and let him die slowly. Just for seeing a dream. So imagine this guy is making a fabrication something the Muslims don't accept imagine what will happen to him Indeed, so my, 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 my friend my friend Kalam, you, you know look obviously you know you have your opinion and you you will you you will be uh, uh, focusing on it no problem but as you see the Muslim they say it's Sahih for me as a Christian I have to go what Muslims they say and when I All say right. the Muslims is not a guy who said that this guy or this hadith is Mursal you know, I have to go. The Muslims go by the majority. If the majority Indeed. agree on something, then you go with it. This is what they say. Indeed, and I and I don't disagree with that. And that's why the majority is agreeing, going ahead with falsehood. They know it's false, but they still continue. Let me just quickly read this, okay? Again, I'm sharing my screen so my audience can see this. It clearly says here what Aura stated here is Mursal, incomplete, as we mentioned above in its content. Okay, they've they, he's clearly said it, clear as day. But this is the cognitive dissonance that my starts friend do you know what Mursal mean do you know what, yeah, do you know what Mursal mean okay let me ask you first do you know what Mursal mean I do let me just finish my point and then no 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 what what Mursal mean tell me first let me finish my point and now and uh, my what friend no tell me what Mursal mean because you are basing oh, 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 basing your argument in the word Mursal what Mursal mean I will I will do it as soon as I finish my argument <laughs> it's only gonna take 10 okay, seconds go, go ahead so he basically said it's Mursal so he knows it's, it's incomplete but in his content it must my friend be who said to you that the word Mursal mean incomplete no, this is the translation. Here. I'm not saying that this is what it means. This is the translation. I'm asking on. you then. Um, let me repeat. Then you see, you keep saying, "Let me finish my point," but you do not because you don't know what Mursal. You keep you are basing your judgment in the word Mursal. What Mursal mean? Christian Prince, if I could just finish my my, my ten. My seconds, friend, why but, you don't tell me what Mursal mean? Because I just want to finish my point. First. No, tell me first what Mursal. Because this word I did not understand. That I want to learn from you what the word Mursal mean. I know. Let me just finish my point. And no, I'll tell, tell me first. No, you know, you know. I know, you know. I don't know. You, I want to learn from you. Tell me what Mursal mean. Oh, gosh. Anyways, it says here, but must be judged as Mutasir. My okay? friend, On, you need to tell me what Mursal mean. Not, what Mursal mean? Mursal just basically means that it's loose. It's unconnected. There's a break in the chain. Connected basically. to who? Sorry? Connected to who? Connected to, to um, Muhammad. How that can be? I mean, how you can be connected to Muhammad? The hadith is not even mentioned from Muhammad. Exactly, but it, it, the hadiths literally are the narrations, what Muhammad said, the actions of Muhammad, and the things that he allowed or was permissible in front of him. My friend, this is so, a big fat so lie. Is, the hadith is, is not necessarily about Muhammad saying. So, it's about so anyone from the companion. Listen, you do not know what are you talking about. Who said that the hadith is what come from Muhammad only? Any one of the companion, he says something is called hadith. And this is the wife of the prophet reporting what happened to her.
Yes, there is. Well, hadith is something that's connected to the prophet in terms of his actions, the things that the companions. That's narrate, false, my friend. That's false. Exclude. That's false. Okay. The Mursal, well, the Mursal just, hadith, yes. the Mursal hadith is coming from somebody. He is considered a tabi'i. A tabi'i which means a follower, which means somebody was not first-hand witness in the time of the story. As simple as that. So, what your exactly. knowledge about Mursal is not true. Mursal means a chain that is interrupted. Is interrupted. Exactly. So let me quickly finish, right? So it is, it is Mursal, and that's, and I gave the definition of what Mursal actually. No, means. you don't give me. You give me a wrong definition, my friend. You said you, you it's said it's not connected to Muhammad. It's not connected to it's Muhammad. The chain that's interrupted. Mm. The chain is interrupted. It's not complete. It's, yeah. it's right. It's interrupted. And it's interrupted exactly. So mm. I've given you the definition. Who is the one who's talking there? I hear somebody so talking. Um, M Stacks, I need you just to mute your mic out, right? So I've given you the definition. It's yeah, it looks like there's somebody is telling you what to say to me. No problem. I said exactly the same thing. I could bring it up now. No, no who is the guy who's talking? Why you don't let him talk to me? Because there's no need. There's no need. He's no, just... no, let him talk to me. I mean, obviously, you are repeating what he's saying. I heard him saying exactly what you said. You are repeating exactly what he says. So you are not even talking for yourself. You claim that I, this is I your gave, conclusion. Gave, My friend, you claim you claim that this is your conclusion. And now we find that you are not telling the truth. It's somebody telling you exactly what to say. Okay, M Stacks, are you telling me what to say? Well, we heard him and you repeat exactly. No, M Stacks, can you unmute your mic real quickly? Are My you... friend, let him call me. I have no time for kids. Let him call me. Guys, didn't you hear him saying to him what to say? And he was repeating exactly. What a shame. This is my study. This is my conclusion. And he have a guy in the background. He's a Muslim telling him what to say. This is what Mursal mean. Hello? Call me, Muhammad. Call me. How in the world you do this, Kalam? You know, I have respect for you, but now you lost my respect, honestly. You claim that you are the one who's talking to me, but the fact you are just being a kid, somebody is telling you what to say to me word by word. Why you do that? Why you don't be honest and say, I have a guy with me. Can he join the conversation? <laughs> anyway I'm not angry from you it's okay but you got yourself busted my friend this hadith is morsel this hadith is morsel so even if it's a morsel it is sahih even if somebody says to you it's a morsel there's no proof that it's not sahih do people have a brain? And by the way, even the hadith which is called weak, not Mursal, even that one is considered accepted. You can go right now. Let me find you the, 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 the video in Google. Hold on, in, in YouTube. Give me a second. <clears throat> if we go right now, and we search in YouTube, I will search Sheikh Hamza Daif Hadith. Here we go. All of you can go and watch this video. All of you. I'm not going to play it, so you will not say to me I'm playing copyright. I quote for you what he say exactly by word that a weak hadith did not funk. It pass. It pass. Ignorant people, even the weak one. What we will do now? All this game, 
You bring me someone talking to you, telling you what to say, and you claim that you are the one is talking. And you, Kalam, you are the one who, you know, speak to Muslims, supposedly you are the one who is being honest. But in fact, you are not, you are being like a doll in the hand of somebody telling you what to say. And the funny, we heard him saying the exact sentences you keep repeating. I was saying to myself, why am I hearing this twice? <laughs> Guys, I was saying to myself, why am I hearing myself twice? What's happening? I thought this is maybe an echo, but obviously it's different voice. What a shame. Do we have any Muslim would like to call us? I just received a message from somebody. Hello? Hello? Hello, Christian Prince. Hey, my friend. Please mute uh, YouTube so you, we don't hear ourselves twice, if you don't mind. Okay, um, I'm watching your live video now, but I don't know if I'm connected. You are connected. We hear you. Go ahead. Okay, um, I want to thank you very much for your wonderful teaching. All right, you're welcome. Yeah, because I was a Muslim. I'm a Muslim from Gambia, but presently I'm staying in Austria. So you used to be a Muslim? before yeah like a few months ago uh, but i since since i was in gambia i was never you know convinced of islam because of the teaching never appreciate me i don't have i don't have other choice you know therefore i have to be because of my parents you know the society i am from all are muslim mm. But your teaching is very wonderful, you know. So what, what makes you leave Islam, my friend? Uh, yeah, because of a um, lot of things and a lot of confusion. And pe even people who are Muslim, they are very, if you ask them a question, they, if they couldn't answer, they just ask you to believe it like that. And I feel like I can't believe like that, you know, because of if I, I have some doubts, then if those doubts are not clear to me then therefore i am following something which is lunatic so this is why i but i used to listen to david Wood and others but since i start following your channel i know because of uh you just don't say things like that but you anything you say you have a proof and i'll also uh, listen to your debate with some people and I feel like you no, know, you are you are the best because of even any debate, you know, the way you talk and the way you present your thing, there is no that the person will say, I don't want to believe what he said, but well, I'm happy you for said you, my friend. Clearly, you know? I'm happy for you, my friend, that you left Islam, and I'm happy that you're listening to my videos. Did, did my videos make you make a decision to leave Islam, or this has have nothing to do with me? Please, Peter. I'm saying, is it my videos made you? decide to leave Islam or you decide to leave before you no no not because yeah I decide to leave the I don't hear you go ahead I um, was not convinced because of I don't know a lot of things about it All right. but f from your teaching I know a lot of things and I've I'm because truth is just a truth if if, if you say truth you know true what is truth in Gambia or what is truth in Africa is the same truth in everywhere so true is just true you know all right okay my friend we cannot keep you for long on uh, thank you for calling and feel free to invite muslim okay. to debate me thank you very much okay one more question i'll sure. how can i get your books you can get my books from amazon.com amazon.com okay yeah Sarish, maybe there's Amazon Gambia. I'm not sure. Amazon Africa. I'm not sure. You know. So, so yeah, but I'm, 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 I'm presently. I'm in Austria. Oh, you can search then uh, uh, Amazon. Maybe Germany. You know, uh, uh, Amazon.de. I think you will find it there easier, and you will get a free shipping. I think. Okay. Thank right. you very much. Thank Take you very much. Keep Take it up, man. Thank you. Now, for the guy who was speaking and teaching Kalam what to say, why you don't call me? What do you think, guys?
why the guy who was teaching Kalam what to say don't call me himself and I promise you I promise you I will give you three minutes to you to talk two minutes to me to talk can you do it hmm can you do that three minutes for you two minutes for me and we will we will, we will put time counter in the screen what do you say my friend instead of teaching the guy what to say well here we go let us talk to the guy the big guy not the one behind the scene or the one who is a voice and the other one who said him i mean how even kalami accept such a thing to happen he have somebody in the head he have a headset and he is listening to what the guy is saying him and then he tell me what the guy says to him so I am obviously I'm talking to that guy, not to you. This hadith is Mursal, brother. So what is of a Mursal? And who cares about this hadith? There's tons of hadith. As you see in the front of you in the screen, even the Da'if hadith, it, it passed, did not funk. Only donkeys, they keep saying weak hadith. Now, where is the guy who was teaching Kalam? Can you call me, my friend? hello hello see i'm going to put in the screen here we got it just to show you what i will do i will put in the screen the time for you three minutes for me two minutes do you dare to call Anyone? Who wanna call? Teaching the guy what to say, what a shame. And the brother, this is a Mursal Hadith, brother. A brother, the Mursal Hadith is not connected to the Prophet, brother. <laughs> this guy, he thinks Hadith is only what Muhammad said. So the, the, the hadith of Aisha is not a hadith. So why they call it hadith? If it's not a hadith, why it's located in the book of hadith? There's tons, tons of hadith have nothing to do with Muhammad, and yet they are accepted. The Quran itself have nothing to do with Muhammad. If you open the Quran in page number eight, it says that this Quran is recited according to, according to, according to. But the last one who recited the Quran to us is Hafs. And Hafs, he came more than 200 years after Muhammad. And he never met Muhammad. So what according to mean? What connected mean? How we know even that this guy is not making things up that he is connected? Yeah. Anyway, where is the guy who was teaching the Kalam? Are you going to call me or not? You see, we put for you on the screen the counter for three minutes. Why you don't want to call? Be a man. I will give you three minutes, I promise. Three minutes for you, two minutes for me. Are you there? You know, do you remember those uh, dolls? There's a guy, he put his hand inside the doll and he move it and he make a sound under the table and the kids, they think the doll is talking. Do you remember them? Well, I don't know what they call them in English. This is what happened to this Kalam. I mean, this is a shame. Why Kalam he accept this? Why you don't tell me, okay, here we go, we have a guy with us, you know, and put him in the conversation. All this time he's telling you what to say, and you are saying exactly the same sentence. 
And the funny, he claimed that this is his own research. If it is your own research, why are you are repeating what that guy say? Anyway, my friend, the conclusion that we have a stupid religion and whoever tried to defend it, he will look stupid. Because if the Muslim themselves, they agree that this hadith is correct, who are you? Who are you? You just made yourself look stupid. If you have a Shia guy, well, the Shia, they have sex with the children. They are not better than the Sunni. If you're a friend, the one is teaching you what to say, he's a Shia. Huh? Well, the Shia, go and read Al Khomeini in the book of Tahrir al Wasila. It says, Is there's no problem for a person if he have if he put his private part between the tithe, the thigh of of, of little child who is an infant still sucking milk. So Shia, Sunni, it doesn't matter, it's the same garbage. It is one coin, have two ugly faces. And when in his video he says that the one who says that this is for young one is Ibn Abbas, and, and this is and this is the only one who said that this is additional stupid lie to say. Why? Because that guy he said that to him. I showed you the reference in the front of your eyes that all the Muslim scholars agree that this is about young age. <clears throat> Read with me carefully, brother. Brother, who is a Muslim who read Arabic? He would like to call where it says here that this is Wahua fi Jumla Sahih. Why Muslim saying it's Sahih, brother? If it is not Sahih. <coughs> Do we have any Muslim? But don't, guys, uh, please don't, uh, don't stop the Muslim from saying Allahu Akbar. It's okay. So why, why you are stopping him? Uh, Christian by choice, please. Let the Muslim say whatever they want to say. I mean, we are here to talk to them. As long as he is not using a dirty language, no problem. Even if he insult me, please. Who is a Muslim want to call me? Who is the Muslim like to call me? No, my friend, I did not misunderstand. Kalam, he claimed that he is the one who come to this conclusion and we heard the guy telling him exactly what he was repeating. Secondly, if it is him or not, who care? I mean, who is he to come with the conclusion? Is Islam based on this guy? Do the Muslims even like, he's the Prophet Muhammad now, he is the, he is Saint Muhammad. And now the Muslims will listen to Kalam because he did academic study. And the rest of the Muslims, brother, they did not do academic study. Only Kalam he did. And as long as Kalam he come with this conclusion, that's it, Kalam must be right. <laughs> right? Yeah. <clears throat> academic study. So those are scholars who they are the, the names of Al Mawrudi, Al Tabarani, Al Jalalain, Al Qurtubi, uh, 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 even Ibn Kathir. He mentioned to me Ibn Kathir, Ibn Kathir. He said the opposite, and all those names. And then we see, we find the Hadith in a book. It's called Al Sahih, and then we find the book in the explanation of Al Sahih, and all of them they are confirming that this is a Sahih Hadith. Yet this guy he come his to his conclusion, no problem. Do we have any Muslim? I, I have nothing against the gentleman, by the way. I, actually, I like him. He's a nice guy. He's a nice guy. I don't want to put him down. But I was upset that he have a guy in the background and he is telling him what to say. You can believe in whatever you want, my friend. Who cares? This is your this is your business. But don't, don't tell me that those are wrong. Who are you to tell they are wrong? 
all the reference you are reading for me is based in the translation delivered to you, which is can be 90% of it is false. Any book you read, it is a translation. It is a possibility that the author is lying. And my experience that Muslims, when they translate books about Islam, they don't tell the truth. As an example, I can open a camera right now and show you the book of Ibn Kathir, the interpretation of Ibn Kathir, and you will see how many books it is. You go to buy the book. If I go right now and show you an, a verse from the Quran and the interpretation in Arabic, and then we go to the same verse interpretation in English, you will see how, how, how in the miraculous way it should shrink. Where is the interpretation is gone? They lie, my friend. Anyway, guys, we will go back to our topic where supposedly we should we should go for before we start our our uh, we we are done with this Aisha uh, thing. Forget about it. You know, here by the way, here is an article. This what, what this is where those guys they get those uh, funny. He claimed that this is his uh, conclusion. The fact he have no conclusion. All what he got is what Muslims they claim. And those are the young kids who try to defend Muhammad. You see it? It's exactly is what he what he what he was saying. They are weak, fabricated. They are weak. Do you see what they say? They are weak, and they are fabricated. The author mainly reeled and taking quote from many work. Of different history books such as at Tabari and etc., without even waiting to verify if those quotes or narration are sahih. <laughs> Where did you get this? Is our <laughs> claim number one, claim number one, blah 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 blah. Stupid articles. I will make an offer for the Muslims, a challenge. We have tons of hadith saying that Aisha, she was a kid when she married the prophet. Who can show me a hadith saying the opposite? Guys, is that fair? Is that fair? Who can show me a hadith proving that Aisha, she was not six years old? She was an old woman, as they claim. She was 18 years old. All the hadith, they agree to fabricate one thing not even one muslim from that time says this is not a true because i was there who want to show me one hadith proving that those stories are false there is no debate in this debate with muhammad hijab because both of them they are going to reprint and they will read from the computer what they prepare to to say you see a topic which is all already prepared in advance is not a debate. Five minutes for you, five minutes for me. People they snore and people they start doing yawning. Real debate is crossfire. <clears throat> My friend, look what this uh, uh, somebody saying that the Muslim they use, uh, the, the the Arab they use. Uh, uh, to say to Muhammad that he is the trustworthy. <coughs> Isn't it the Muslims who say that Muhammad, he went to the house of his own son, wife, and he flirted with her? Is that a trustworthy for you? What do you think, Mr. Uh, the one who said that? If I go to your house and I adopt you to be my son, and then when I arrive to your house, I flirt with your wife. Am I worthy? What do you say? Be honest. This is all is a fabrication. A trust worthy person, he will not flirt with married women. He will not. 
Hello. Hello. Hello, Christian Prince. Hello, hello my friend. How are you? Yeah. Hello. I'm a guy from Sweden. All right. Uh, my name is uh, Satan six 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 in this uh, channel. You have seen me probably. <laughs> Why your name is Satan six six six? For no reason, really. Uh, I wanted to ask something. Are the Muslims claiming that uh, Aisha was like eighteen weeks? <laughs> years old to like justify that uh, stupid things well the muslims they are not uh, trying to justify anything they are trying just to say that muhammad was he married to a woman not to a child yeah hmm. yeah but uh, i can uh, like when i heard about the 18 like years old i thought about you know the uh, general like um, law you know that they try to appease to the law in some some house <laughs> all right well my friend let, yeah. us, let us go for a topic you know we are done with this do you have any other question no no really no all right. okay thank you i'll thank be you. listening no, thank you no, thank bye you. bye <laughs> if, if there is any muslim would like to call please feel free if there's any muslim want to call us if there is any muslim he like to call us, please. Let me show you what the Muslims they say about the trustworthy Muhammad. And tomorrow we will get the guy, somebody saying to me, this is my conclusion. Have fun with your conclusion, my friend. This is the chapter of al Ahzab, verse number 37. And this is Tafsir Al-Qurtubi. If you don't like Al-Qurtubi, we can change, no problem. All right, and you will see here they are mentioning things which is correct, sahih. This is why they say, "Qad akhrajahu Muslim fi sahihi," Muslim in his correct book. It's this, it's called correct because it's correct. Wahwa aladi sahahu turmudi fi jamihi. So a turmudi correct or let's say approve what is in the book of Muslim. And in Al Bukhari, and from Anas ibn Malik, and from Umar ibn Mas'ud, and from Aisha, and from Al Hassan. What this story is about? The story is in front of us. I changed any Muslim to come and read. Wakala Muqatil, Muqatil reported. Uh, that the Prophet he married Zainab bin to Jahish to Zaid and she stayed with him for some time and then the Prophet he went to visit Zaid one day and he saw Zainab standing and she was white and big you know I told you before that in the time of Muhammad if the woman she is big heavy set let us say I don't want to use the word fat but this is what they meant, really. She's a big, big in size. She was so big and she was white, and she was from the most beautiful women of Quraysh. Fahawiha. Waqal Subhanullah Muqallibul Qulub. So he, be, he became in love with her and he flirted with her and said, Praise be Allah who flipped my heart for you. Is that a trustworthy? A person going to his own son's house, flirting with the wife, she is married to his son. Any Muslim have an answer? Are you going to say to me that this is a story reported to be false? You can say so. No problem. Say as you wish. But it's in the front of you, written by you, printed by you, published by you, preserved by you, Muslims. Do we have any Muslim when I call us? And about Muslim when I debate about the Trinity, you see, Muhammad is nothing but a, a, a thief. Muhammad himself is nothing but a thief. As an example, let us close some pages here. I have ton, tons of pages open already. We do not 
need them. <clears throat> All right. My friend, don't tell me that Abdul, he want to debate me. He can't call me. Don't tell me why he, so why he don't call me. Where is the Abdul want to call me? Call me. Abdul, the one who called himself Mr. Stack is whatever your name. You call me. Do you want to call? Cool, I'm waiting for you. Be a man and call. Instead of uh, asking somebody else to call for you and you speak from behind the curtain like Allah. Take the curtain off and call me. I mean, what will happen to you if you call me? If you don't call, I'm going to ignore you. I will, I will even I will block you from the channel if you keep posting just as, as saying stupid things. Either be a man and call me, or get you know go play with the kids from your age. The Muslims always they want to debate you about what? About tawhid. How many times we heard the Muslim they say to you, the Trinity is false and we believe in Tawheed. But do you know what Tawheed mean? Do you know Muslims what Tawheed mean? The second you say Tawheed, you believe in the Trinity. Because Tawheed, it does not mean one. The word Tawheed, the second the Muslim, he said to you, I believe in Tawheed. He just admitted that he is not. Actually, it's not even Trinity. I mean, uh, Tawheed is more. It's not it's like because Trinity is believing in one God. Tawheed is not about believing in one God. Tawheed is about corporation. It's not about one God. So how you believe in Tawheed? If you ask anyone what Tawheed means. If I make now, if I ask an Arab guy to make a sentence about Tawheed, <clears throat> what he will, what he will say to me, Tawheed to unify the the, the 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 Arabian countries. Okay, so that means there's many countries, and we need to unify them. It's about unification of something. If Allah is unified or is is, is one, how you want to unify the one? Muslims, they have no idea what they believe in. They just copy paste. Somebody say we believe in Tawheed. The Muslim they copy paste. Okay, where where we can find the word Tawheed, Muslims? They will say to you, well, this is a conclusion. The same as you believe in the Trinity, it's a conclusion. Okay, get me the conclusion of Tawheed. How you come to the conclusion of Tawheed? If Tawheed is unification of gods, gods, not God, because you cannot unify a god. He exists as one. The Muslims, they are following a fufu prophet. Read with me this hadith and love. A man heard another man reciting Surah Al-Ikhlas. Surah Al-Ikhlas is a very small, tiny chapter at the end of the Quran. <clears throat> the unity. The what, what? The unity? <laughs> is that your Muslim translation, Muslims? Uh, this is not my translation. The unity. Thank you very much. Say, Allah, say, Allah, He is the one. He is the one what? Guys, I'm not reading my translation. This is the Muslim translation. Correct? Allah is the one. The one what? Any Muslim can tell me Allah is the one. Allah the one what? The second you say he is the one, 
That's mean you are counting him out of numbers. He's one of what? Any Muslim have an idea? Then look what Muhammad he said. And he was repeating it. So the Abdul, he keeps saying, Allah is the one. Qul huwa Allah huwa ahad. Qul huwa Allah huwa ahad. You see, when I say to the Muslims that the translation of the Quran is a lie, they say to me, they say to me, that the Quran says that Allah is one. But look, the Muslim, they get themselves busted. Look, it says, Allah, he is the one. The one. The one? It cannot be Allah is one, and then you say Allah the one. The fact is that the Quran does not say Allah is one here in this verse and does not say Allah is the one. It says Allah is one of. And Muhammad here is copying something from the Old Testament. Anyone remember a closed word in the Hebrew? Anyone remember a closed word in the Hebrew? If you read, if we continue reading this hadith, you will see the following. Hello? Hello? Yes. Yes, thank you so much. Uh, could you please add uh, heard that? Uh... Don't call me with voice changer, potato. A guy who is talking as a girl. A man heard the man reciting and he says, Allah is the one. Chapter 112. And he was repeating the text in the morning. He came to Allah Messenger and he mentioned holy story to him as he regarded of, of he regarded the recitation of that surah. Insufficient on that. Allah Messenger said, By him. Who is hand my soul is that surah al ikhlas which means one chapter one one twelve equals to the third of the Quran one third of the Quran. Anyone notice here with me here how stupid the statement of Muhammad? Anyone notice how stupid this this statement? Because now Muhammad he claimed that this one third of the Quran is not needed. We can throw it in the garbage because we have this verse or this chapter, which is a few verses. Is that correct? When you say that this one is one third of the Quran, it's mean one third of the Quran is not needed. Having this chapter, we throw the rest. How stupid that is. But let me tell you what Muhammad was trying to copy. He was trying to copy someone we follow. His name is Jesus the Christ. Muhammad, he want to say to the Muslims that this is the most important command of God. Trying to copy Jesus, but because he's a fool, he always do poo-poo. When they ask Jesus, what is the most important command in Mark 12, 29? Do you remember? Guys, do you remember? Jesus answered the foremost here, O Israel, the Lord our God is one God, one Lord. And that was the word Echad. And this is what Muhammad, he used, Ahad. He's trying to make it in Arabic, Ahad. It is Echad. This is one of the command which every Jew do you remember in the Quran where it says that the Jews, they destroy their houses? Let me show you. Chapter 59, verse number 2. It says here,
So they destroy their dwelling by their own hands and the hands of the believers. So what the Muslims, the Quran confirmed that the Muslims, they burn the houses of the Jews and they destroy the houses of the Jews. Read it with me. But here it confirmed too that the Jews, they destroy their houses by their hands. Anyone knows why Muhammad was saying that, this idiot? Muhammad, he could not understand why when they arrived to the Jewish city, they found that all the side of the door, the entrance of the house is destroyed. Because the Jews, they have a sign made in rock. Every Jew in the front of his house, he have a sign. It says, Oh, hear, O oh Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Muhammad, he could not understand why. He thought they are just doing crazy. They are destroying their houses. The fact that what they are doing, they are taking this statement from the Bible so nobody will insult it. But the stupid Muhammad, he think they are destroying their houses. Nobody will destroy his house. And what's the point? Anyway, you are leaving. You are running away. So Muhammad, when he put that verse in the Quran, he was trying to copy the statement from the Old Testament here, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one, not the one. And he is trying to say what Jesus said, that the most important command of God is to worship him alone. So Muhammad, he wanted to speak like Jesus. But the second he decided to do so, he started doing poo, poo So he said that he swear by Allah that this chapter which is very short chapter is equal to the third one third of the quran so now we have a problem that the quran one third of it is not required because one third is here in one chapter in the chapter 112. any muslim have an answer for the stupidity of his prophet How you say that? What do you mean that this is one equal? So, well, what, what are you saying? Allah, He keep talking. He, you know, it's not important what He say in the rest. What do What do you mean? It makes sense that there is a most important command, which means this is this is no no. You pass it, you pass it. There's no forgiveness for you. But all of God's words are valuable and they are equal. When you say that this is. This chapter, by the way, this chapter is very funny. It's very and it's very short. How this chapter can be equal to one third of the Quran when there's nothing there? Chapter one twelve is little tiny chapter. I don't know even how they can call it a chapter. This is the whole chapter in the screen. Do you see it? Do you see how he used the chapter? And you will notice right away the impact of a Christianity in this chapter. Right? You notice right away the impact of a Christianity in this chapter. Allah is making Quran just to fit with the Christianity. Allah don't have a son. And by the way, here, they say to you, Allah, the eternal, the absolute, this is a false translation. The word as samad, as samad, is not the absolute. Is not the eternal. As samad, if you, you know, maybe when you, when you, you were to be a kid, you have a little tiny plastic thing, or sometimes it's made from, uh, uh, you know, uh, plastic or from kind of fabric or you know different like there's a hole here and then there's a container and here you throw your coins here is where you save your money samad samad is a place of gathering things Is not a place of absolute. Is not the place of eternal. It's a place where you collect things together. Allah Samad, how he is one, but he is a place of collection.
This is an Aramaic word, have nothing to do with Arabic, by the way. So Muhammad, he claimed that this chapter is the most important chapter in the Quran, and it is equal to one-third of the Quran, just four verses. And as you see, the translation, as I said, is false. If you change the translation, the translator, you will see the translation change in a miraculous way. Look, in the, in the one before it was, Allah is he whom, on whom all depend. But in the previous one, it was what? The eternal, the absolute. I mean, how this happened, to, how, how the eternal, the absolute became, Allah is he on whom all depend. You see, guys, you see what I'm saying? How the translation became something totally different just by changing the translator. The answer is very simple because this is not an Arabic word and the Muslim, they have no idea what it means. Everybody is, is, is giving his best, his guess. Okay, let us guess what this means. And then he says, and none is like him. This is a verse taken from the Bible that none is like God. <laughs> so here, Muhammad, he copied two things. Oh, here, oh, Israel, your God is one. Oh, we have Amir from Germany is calling. Hello, Amir. Hey, I'm here. You know, I, I am live on air. Huh? Yeah, and sorry, the other day you called me. I was in the church. I was going to speak. I was in Texas. I sent you the video. You saw it? Yeah, it was the ch big, huge church. Yeah, it was full and a lot of people there. I wish you were there. Yeah, very huge. Perfect. You know, you called me exactly when they were going to call me to go to the stage, you know, and... Uh, okay. Uh, you know, uh, they were preparing for the disaster to come. <laughs> yes, brother, I want to ask you, did you watch the debate between uh, Mohammed Hijab and David Wood? It's now live on air. My friend, I don't watch debate. Uh, this guy is a kid. If you want to debate me, let him come here. <laughs> He's a kid. Yeah, I, We know exactly how it ends. He yeah. speaks one hour, he speaks one hour, then he 20 minutes. Right, then it's a... It's a monologue. It's it it is an it's an exchange of songs. You know, there's no debate in the debate. Yeah. Anyway, my friend, I have to go back because I'm explaining the verse in the Quran. Uh, you can you can okay. join us in the chat and uh, and again, I, I uh, maybe next time I will take you with me to Texas. They will like you there. Yes, brother. I, 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 the Lord willing. I mean, I mean to that. Thank you very much for calling, my friend. Take care. Okay. See take you. Bye bye. Bye bye. You know, sometimes, I mean, you wonder how things work. I, my phone is, is, is silent all the time. And the second I want to go to the stage, everybody starts calling me. Everybody starts calling me. I'm like, the guy is talking about me. He's going, to, he's going to say, and now we have a Christian prince to come to the stage. And then suddenly, all, suddenly everybody remember me. Anyway. Muhammad is nothing but a false prophet who is trying to copy the words of Jesus. And the problem with this prophet, which is a, a problem I like myself, I really like it, that each time he talk, he says stupid things. Otherwise, it's going to be hard for you, and you might, he might confuse you. I challenge any Muslim to tell me how this chapter, which is four verses, is equal to one-third of the Quran. And what does that mean? One third of the Quran is not needed. Allah, He may, He say things is not needed. Why this chapter, which is only actually, it's not. We cannot say even a chapter; it's a verse. Because you guys, if you go back in the Arabic, if you take if you take the the, the line, this is the, the Quran never was like have one, two, three, four. There's nothing like that. Muhammad did not tell them one, two, three, four. This is the Muslim decision to make it one, two, three, four. So it's a short sentence, short Arabic sentence. It's one phrase. How this became one third of the Quran, and how the Muslims accept such a thing to be said. 
This is a disaster. Any Abdul? Who is Abdul when I call us, my friend? You know, uh, one one of the funny things about Muslims, they say that if you read Quran, you have to ask Allah. Uh, no, you have to seek refuge to by Allah. Okay, question, Muslims. If you are reading Quran, why you need to seek refuge by Allah? What is the problem exactly? فَإِذَا قَرَأْتَ الْقُرْآنِ فَاسْتَعِذْ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ If you read the Quran, ask Allah for, uh, uh, for seek refuge by Allah from shaitan. Why? You are reading the Quran. <laughs> Hello? Any Muslim have an idea? How we are reading the Quran, but yet we have to seek refuge by Allah? I don't know. How that can happen? Is the Quran? When you when you read the Quran, the Quran will bring the shaitan to you? <clears throat> Let us see. Who is a Muslim? Want to explain to us what's happening? The Shaitan, he keep whispering to Muhammad. Allah said to Muhammad, when you shaitan, he whispered to you, seek refuge by Allah. Question. So how Muhammad, he received satanic verses? Any Muslim can tell us? Shaitan, he makes suggestion to Muhammad. What he, what he tell him? And the solution for that to seek refuge with Allah is it working? Isn't it you Muslims complain and you say that the Jews they made a black magic over Muhammad? Obviously, seeking refuge by Allah is not working. To the point Allah He sent three three angels, two two of them is a nurse, and one of them is Jibril, he's a doctor. And they cut and they make a surgery for Muhammad. Some they say they found that the magic in a well of a Jewish guy. Where is the seek refugee? What seek refugee? How come are you saying to me Muhammad was seeking refugee but Allah did not help? In chapter 16, verse number 98, it says, فَإِذَا قَرَأْتَ الْقُرْآنَ فَاسْتَعِذْ بِاللَّهِ If you read the Quran, seek refuge by Allah. Why? Any Muslim can explain. You are reading Quran. Why? Why when you are reading Quran? Why reading Quran will bring shaitan? Any Muslim have an answer? No answer. Who is a Muslim want to call us? Muhammad, he did not make any claim about Jesus. Muhammad is just a guy who follow others. See, Muhammad, he is a puppet. Muhammad, he talked to you, but there's a guy from behind the curtain talking to Muhammad. Muhammad is just a puppet. He's in the front line.
We mentioned before Waraka bin Nufal, who is the real father of Muhammad. Waraka he decided to make Muhammad uh, to inherit his business. You see, uh, Waraka was the leader of the Nasara in Mecca. Khadija was a Nasara. The Muslim agree that Waraka converted to be Nasara and he was a monk among the Nasara. Khadija was Nasara, which means there was Nasara in Mecca. And obviously her family, they are Nasara. And Waraka himself, by the way, he is relative to Khadija. And I believe strongly that Waraka is behind the marriage between Muhammad and Khadija because Muhammad is his real son. Muhammad, he grew in the house of Waraka for 40 years. 40 years Waraka is teaching Muhammad. Each time Muhammad he come and he tried to present himself as a, as a prophet, the people around him they laugh at him for he is not qualified. You see, in the beginning, if we go to this verse as an example. <clears throat> in chapter 3 verse number 79 it says here in Arabic كونوا عبادا لي من دون الله ولكن كونوا ربانيين بما كنتم تعلمون الكتاب وبما كنتم تدرسون if you go and try to find the interpretation for this, you will see how crazy this is. This. Let us see the, 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 the translation of this verse. If there's any Muslim would like to, you know, read for us, please feel free. All right? Of your constant teaching of scriptures, what scriptures? Any Muslim can tell me. Allah speaking to Muhammad here. He says to him, "Say, O Muhammad, Lu, blah 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 blah." And then he says here something impossible to believe. It is not possible for any human being into whom Allah had given the scriptures and wisdom and the prophethood that he should afterward have said into mankind, be slaves of me instead of Allah. But be ye faithful, faithful servant of the Lord by virtue of your constant teaching of the scriptures and your constant study. Therefore, what, script, what scriptures? Do Muslims you have scriptures already? When Muhammad you receive scriptures, what scriptures are you talking about? Isn't it the Muslims they say that the, the, the Quran called the Christians people of the scriptures and Muslim never been called by that name? If you Muslim have scriptures, how come Allah don't call you people of the scriptures too? And here, by the way. You will see that he, uh, the Quran using the word like "rabbaniyin." Uh, this is this is an Ara this is a pure Aramaic word. Have nothing to do with Arabic. Why Muhammad is using this word? The Arab don't even know what "rabbaniyin" mean. That, but because he this is what he learned from Waraq ibn Nufal. When the Arab accuse Muhammad that he is copying from others, look what Muhammad he said.
chapter 7 verse 180 but here this is more important chapter 16 verse 103 they told, you know, the Muslim, they say to you that the, the Arab, they were amazed by the Quran, right? But look what the Muslim, the Arab, they said to Muhammad, they were laughing at him. They say they cannot believe how amazing it is, but look what they say to him. We know indeed that they say, who they say, the Arab, it is a man that teach him. They did not say... It cannot be a human. They confirm it's a man teaching him. Teaching him what? In different verses, they say it is the fabulous of all people. We know it already. It is the fairy tales of all people. We know it. And look what Muhammad said. The tongue of him, they wickedly point to its notably foreign. While this is an Arabic pure and clear. <laughs> <laughs> the Quran is not Arabic and it is not clear. Muhammad is the worst debater. They are saying to him that the one who is teaching you is a man. We know them. Muhammad, they want to defend himself. He says, those men who I sit with them and you accuse me that I am learning from them, they don't speak pure Arabic tongue. And what that will do? You can tell me a story right now in English and I can translate it in Arabic in a pure Arabic. So what a big deal. But here Muhammad, he again, he made a poo-poo because it, the Quran is not a pure Arabic. The word Quran itself is not Arabic. Quran is an Aramaic word. Jan Jahannam is Muhammad a word? Muhammad he stole from the the, the valley of uh, uh, the, the valley of the garbage, you know, where 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 the fire never never stop burning. The word hur is a theft. The word qalam is a theft. The word tabut is a theft. The word injil is a theft. Is the word injil a pure Arabic? This is a Greek word. It's not even a it's not even a Hebrew. Muhammad, Muhammad he even he could not even quote the name of Jesus correctly. He said his name is Isa. What is that? Isu? Isos? The, the Greek name? Where is the pure Arabic? There is no pure Arabic. And the funny, he continued and he say that this book is a pure and clear. I mean, this book is so pure and clear, brother. To the point you read 100 interpretation and then you come, you come to the conclusion that Allah knows best. Do you see how clear? This book is so clear. Isn't it the Quran says, that this book have a lot part big part of it nobody knows what it means save Allah in chapter 3 verse number 7 nobody knows what it means and they say to us the Quran have no contradiction how you say it's so clear and then the Quran says that there is a lot of verses in the Quran, nobody knows what they mean, save Allah. And the funny, he continues saying, those who believe not in the sign of Allah, where is the sign of Allah? The Quran keeps saying that they keep asking Muhammad for a sign. Abdul, where is the signs of Allah? Isn't it the Quran says that Allah, he refrained from giving signs? And you say to me, what is the contradiction in the Quran? I refrain from giving signs. And then here he says, those who believe not in the signs of Allah. How you just told us that there is no sign, you never send a sign. And now you are saying to us, those who refuse to believe in the sign. Shouldn't you send sign first? It's like going to a restaurant and then the guy, the waiter or the waitress, they say to you, get out. You say, why? He said, you did not like our menu. You say to him, you did not give us the menu yet. <laughs> mm 
What is the sign? The Quran confirmed that we refrain from sending miracles because former generation they refuse to believe in it. Confirm, which means refrain, refrain me, refrain. He don't, and he never sent a sign. Translation, please. And we refrain from sending signs only because the men of former generation treated them as false. What? So how you say those who don't believe in our sign and you are saying we refrain to send signs? Did you refrain to send sign or you accept to send or you said sign? Guys, forget about this Kalam, you know, forget about him. He's a poor guy. It's okay. Uh, don't remind me again, you know. Do you remember how many times I asked him, tell me what Morsal mean? Now we know why he is not answering. He was waiting for the guy to search Google. Do you remember how many times I asked what Morsal mean? He keeps saying to me, let me continue my thought. I will answer you, I will answer you. He was waiting for the guy to tell him what Morsal mean. Anyway, just let it go. Poor kid. So, and we refrain from sending the signs only because the men of former generation treated them as false. So Allah never sent the sign. If Allah sent the sign, as if he say in this verse here, that means the Quran is a book of contradiction. Did you send the sign or not? This is stupid. Muhammad, always he say stupid things, proving to us again and again that he cannot be a prophet. As an example, read this verse with me. I want the Muslims, by the way, to call me and to read for us because that even will be better. Shahid Allahu annahu la ilaha illa huwa Allah, he witness that there's no God but him. Well, Allah, he witness. <laughs> Allah, he witness that there's no God but he. I mean, how that can happen? How Allah, he witness that there's no God. Allah is converting to Islam. Saying Shahada. And look here at the false translation. They say, there is no God but Allah, but He, that is the witness of Allah. This is a switch upside down for the Arabic. It doesn't say that. Change the translation. Shakir. Allah bear witness that there is no God but He. <laughs> what, what, what does that mean? And though, and the angels and those who possess knowledge, Maintaining his creation with justice. What what this guy is talking about? Allah witnessing to who? Any Muslim can tell us. When Allah he witnessed, he witnessed to who? You see, you witness in the front of somebody. Somebody he's higher in authority for you. Somebody is questioning you. Muhammad, when he started doing a lot of poo, poo he wanted to go back and he said, you know what, I'm doing too much poo, -poo. Now, who is a Muslim who want to see the proof from the Quran? Muhammad saying, the Quran saying that Muhammad is doing too much poo, -poo. Who want to challenge me that the Quran is saying that? Any Muslim? Who is the Muslim who want to challenge me? To show him the Quran saying that Muhammad was doing too much poo, poo Okay, don't call me. Use a voice uh, changer. 
the guy who make a video wanna debate me, he don't dare to call me, so he may, he use a voice changer of a female. Coward. Look what the Quran said. فَإِنْ كُنْتَ فِي شَكٍ مِمَّا أَنْزَلْنَا إِلَيْكَ فَاسْأَلِ الَّذِينَ يَقْرَؤُونَ الْكِتَابَ مِنْ قَبْلِ What a disaster. This is poo -poo. This is a big, huge poo, -poo. Allah saying to Muhammad supposedly, Hey Muhammad, don't be stupid. Don't be stupid, please. If you don't believe in me, go and ask Christian prince. I'm not lying. This is what the verse saying. Chapter 10, verse number 94. If thou wert indopt as as to what we have revealed into thee. Allah speaking to who? To Muhammad. Muhammad have a doubt about what he revealed to him. If the prophet don't believe he's a prophet, who is going to believe he's a prophet? Then ask those who have been reading the book before thee, those other Christians and the Jews. Muhammad making poo poo. You see, when Muhammad started doing too much poo poo, he wanted to go and get the support of the Christians. That they are the one who should guide him. Allah told me that. That if I have a doubt about what I am receiving, go and ask the Christians and the Jews. But that is a this is really a big poo poo. My friend, the one is telling me to uh, to post Skype. The admin is posting Skype every few seconds. Muslims, they knew my Skype. Don't worry about it. If the Christian are deceived and the Christian will go to hell, so how you will say to me that the God of Muhammad saying to Muhammad, go and ask the Christian and the Jews. Any Muslim can tell me how the false can guide the true prophet. Was the Christian in the time of Muhammad true Christians? If not, then how Allah He said to Muhammad, go and ask the Christians. Any Abdul? Guys, imagine. Somebody say, I'm, I'm teaching you the Bible, and I claim to be a prophet. Then you ask me a question. I say to you, if you don't believe, I'll, you know, okay, okay, hold on. I have a doubt about what I said, so I'm going to talk to the Hindus. Like, what? What the Hindus have to do with him? The Christians are the lost. The Jews are the cursed. This is what the Quran says in chapter 1, verse number 7. So how we are, lost and cursed and yet Allah say to Muhammad go and ask the lost and the cursed hello Somebody is saying to me, you don't care about debate of the, my friend, I don't care about any debate. Why I want to care? I'm going to learn something from it. Do you think I'm going to learn something from that debate? You want to go watch it? Go watch it, my friend. Go ahead. Give them a like. Give support if you wish. I am the last one who watched debate of anyone. What I will learn from a debate like this? I watch videos of others just to refute them, not to, uh, to you watch to learn. I don't watch to learn. What those guys do will teach me. So don't tell me I don't care. Yeah, I don't care. Why I want to care? It's like sending me back to school when I was six years old. By the way, at the age of six, I was much sure. In the Middle East, we used to date at the age of six. Aisha, she was six at the age, you know, she get married. At the age of seven, I like I have like already four wives.
Any Muslim can explain to us this poo poo? How the Christians, how the Jews, they are lost and they are cursed. And then Allah, he says to Muhammad, go and ask the Christian and the Jews to confirm to you what you have adopted about it. And why Muhammad, he have adopted about what Allah revealed to him. Muhammad himself don't believe in Allah. He's a, he's a bad guy. He's a bad Muslim. Huh? Any Abdul? Who is a brave Muslim on a call? You know, the funny, they make videos challenging me, a Christian prince, uh, the, the guy with his name, this guy, the potato, uh, uh, what his name? Connie? I, I forgot what he said to me before. You remember the, the blonde guy, the Muslim? Uh, he he, uh, he posted for me today in Facebook. He says, for how long you will keep hiding? I told him, Abdul, why you don't call me? Potato, be a man. Today I will be alive on air. He said, when you are going to step forward out of your room, what do you want me to step in your bedroom, you stupid idiot? What do you mean step forward? I will go to your house, knock at your door. I mean, do you want my answers or you want to meet me? Uh, we're going to have a date with a bunch of gays. Why everybody want to meet me? And the funny everybody want to meet me is a male. I mean, I wish once a female, she say, I challenge you to debate me life face to face. Why only male? I mean, you see how unlucky I am? Face to face. I'm, I'm so glad they did not say bum to bum. Where you want to meet me? I'm here. What do you want to do exactly? I mean, actually, you know, those debate face to face is useless because if you see in the in the speaker corner what they call it a debate, it's not a debate. People are shouting and nobody is giving reference for anything. Here we can show in the screen what we are reading. In the street is useless. It's like it's just kids shouting over each other. Even if they put a contract on me. You know, I have a life insurance, to, to, and the, uh, the one who will get the life insurance, he will, he will build a big uh, radio station for me from that money. Alhamdulillah. And you know what? If they, if they kill me, maybe then uh, some women, they will like to marry me because I get rich. Alhamdulillah. Finally. Finally, we will find somebody who will marry uh, an Arab uh, Christian who is poor, which is impossible. Any Abdul? Who's Abdul want to debate me? Yeah, my friend, you can see any interpretation, doesn't matter. All of them, they agree that Muhammad, obviously, you see, the verse is so clear. Muhammad, he have, you see, the Muslim, they say to you, Muhammad here, he have no doubt about Allah teaching. You know what? The second you say that, you prove to me that you are mental and you have a drug problem. If Muhammad, he have no doubt, why Allah say to him, if you have a doubt? That's mean your God, Allah is a stupid. Like imagine, I say to somebody, if you have a flu, if you have a flu, drink tea. But the guy is not a sneezing and he don't have a flu. So why he will say to him, if you have a flu, take a drink tea or you know, or drink honey. Why Allah is saying to him, if you have a doubt, if you have, you have no doubt. And what the point of saying to somebody, if you have a doubt when he don't have a doubt, and what the point of saying to him, go and ask the one who they are the losers.
And if the Christian honored the doctor to go and ask them, why is asking him to go and ask the Christians? If they themselves, they are lost. How the lost can guide the one who is not lost? If the Christians are the blind one in this story, here we go. I will put the blinds on our eyes. You know, I'm very good in art, as you see. We are the people of the book. This is a blind. We are wearing glasses, okay? We are blind, brother. Alhamdulillah. So now we are blind. Then Allah, he said to Muhammad, okay, Muhammad, Khabibi Muhammad, brother Tatar, in the Quran, brother, first of all, that the person is named the Christian prince. And the Christian prince, always he made the false accusation about the prophet. When Allah, he said to the prophet, go and add the Christian and the dude. First of all, those are different Christian. And the proof they are different Christian. The Christian today, indeed, they, they, they go to the beach and they wear bikini. Do the Christian at that time don't wear bikini. And that's why Allah he said to them, go and ask the, the, the Christian. What, what bikini? What shikini? What, what tomatini? What are you talking about? Those are a Christian who they are lost in the time of Muhammad. Why Allah is saying to Muhammad, go and ask the Christian who are blind. And even the Quran described them in the time of Muhammad, they are the worst of the creatures. Allah, he asked Muhammad to come and ask us when we are lost. By the way, because here in this channel, we have a lot of, of, of Zakir Naik flood. So I advise you to buy an insurance, flood insurance. This is a religion? This is a prophet? And you are a believer? <laughs> In different verse, Muhammad, he said, ask the people of the book if you don't believe. Ask the people of the book. What do you mean, ask the people of the book? I thought they are lost. They are bad. Do we have any Muslim would like to call us? You see, somebody said to me in the text there, uh, that the Muslim they say Muhammad is an international prophet. Well, he's international if you think about it. The guy he he slept with everybody. And this is what the sign of being international. But the Quran confirmed the opposite. Let us see. Hold on. Let us change. Uh, in chapter 6 verse number 92 it says that Allah he sent Muhammad to be a messenger for Mecca and what is around it okay how big around Mecca huh Did any Muslim can tell us And this is a book which we send down, bringing blessing and confirming the revelation. What revelation? The, the Bible. How you can confirm it if you don't have it? How you can confirm something is not exist no more? The Muslims, they say to us, the true Bible is gone. Muhammad is confirming it? Have you ever heard of such a stupid thing like this? How it is lost, and yet you are confirming what you don't have. And Muhammad, he have no knowledge of it. Imagine this. I am a Christian prince. I know nothing about Buddha religion. Then I confirm to you the Buddha book. Who is the stupid here? How Muhammad he confirm a book he never read, he never have, he have never hold. In the top of that, the Muslim they claim is not exist no more.
Any Muslim? How you can confirm it? Not even Zakir Naik can explain that to us. I wish I can call him now, but it's getting late. You know, no, it's actually it's morning for Zakir Naik. He finished having sex. 70 years orgasm. I mean, you see, the prophet is super smart individual, and God he inspired him, yet he promised him 70 years orgasm. I mean, is that is that a labor? I mean, is that heaven or this is like going for eternity to do labor hard work? 70 years orgasm, what do you want to do? Make it 40 years. I mean, don't you think 70 years is too much? Every orgasm, 70 years. What about we make it 70 years less one day? I mean, let us celebrate one, like the last day of the 70 years, like uh, uh, the, the new year. Can we have a new year without sex for for the sake of Allah? <clears throat> Do you know how many times we can go around the earth in 70 years? 70 years. 70 years, Zachary Naik, his mouth is open and he's having orgasm. And, and, and how much, uh, how much he, uh, it does not go there. Let us keep it under the age. 70 years. I'm really convinced that Muhammad is a prophet. And the proof is a prophet. He's confirming a book. He do not know how to read. He never read. The Muslim, the, what make it more stupid, Muhammad do not know how to read according to Muslims. Okay. How this guy, he will confirm the book which he cannot read anyway. In the front of me, there is a book in Chinese. And now the guy, he finished talking, he said to me, do you agree? I say, yes, I agree. I'm confirming what you said. How you can confirm it? Especially the book was not written in Arabic. It was either in Hebrew or in Aramaic or in Greek. Did I tell you this story? Uh, once I confirmed uh, uh, something to a Spanish woman, I went to a restaurant, Spanish restaurant. The women behind the counter don't speak English. So she have like pictures of menu, menu and, and the four dishes. And I, I point my finger and I told her this one. And then she keeps saying things to me and the, the smart me keeps saying, okay, okay, okay. I was confirming like Muhammad, okay, okay. She keep talking, I say, okay. Then I went and sit in my table and then a guy a mexican guy he came and he's holding a big huge tray in the top of his head he put it in the table next to me and he started putting dishes i said this is not for me senor senor no senor like, what's senor man this is not my dishes i chose one dish what is this so the mexican woman she was saying to me do you like to eat this like to eat that and i and, and the smart me was confirming like muhammad keeps saying okay Okay, since then I, I, re I learned I will never say okay to someone don't speak his language. Muhammad is confirming to us, he keeps saying okay, but he never read the Bible, he never understand the language of the Bible, and he is not a Christian, he never been a Christian supposedly, and he cannot even read Arabic, how he can confirm it. Any Abdul? Okay. See, si, senor. The Christian read the Bible. Muhammad said to them, See, si, senor. Do you Muslims say, See, si, senor, now? And Muhammad was sent to send to as a prophet for the. the uh, for this, uh, for the mother of the cities, it's not a city. In Arabic, it says Al-Qura, the, the, the village. And what is around it? That's it. What Muhammad? Muhammad is an international prophet. International prophet, he don't speak the language of the, old, the whole world. You see, the Quran said, we never send a messenger except he speak in the tongue of his people.
وما أرسلنا من رسول إلا بلسان قومه ليبين لهم فيضل الله ما يشاء which is very disgusting Allah he guide where he who he wish and Allah he he misguide who he wish or deceive chapter 14 verse number 4 okay and we never send a messenger save with the language of his folk okay how Muhammad can be a prophet or for Zakir Naik but yet he don't speak the language of Zakir Naik brother isn't it the Quran says Allah will never send a messenger unless he speak the language of his people? Let us call Zakir Naik and ask him if this is true. Tiradun, 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 tiradun. Uh, Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum uh, Brother, uh, the Quran says in chapter 14, verse number 4, uh, that's. Uh, <clears throat> uh, 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 Allah never sent the messenger unless he speak the language of his people. So how the prophet he is a of uh, Muhammad is a prophet for you and you are a Pakistani or from Bangladesh. First of all, I know who is the one who is behind the question. Stop saying in your voice, I know you. Your name is the Christian friend. And you are very well known that always you meet Kutaisin for the Quran, brother Sitar. The word in the Quran is said that Allah never sent the messenger unless He speak the language of the people, and this is true. But what people do not know that the Prophet He speak all languages. As an example, to prove that the Quran speak all languages, that if you try to understand one word in the Quran, you can understand. Why? Because it's international language, which nobody understands. Thank you very much. This is the proof that the Quran is international, that nobody understands it. It's a language for everybody, but yet everybody can't understand. It makes sense. It makes sense. I mean, that's it. Any Muslim want to tell us how Allah He sent the messenger only to people who speak His language, and not only that, He have to be one, the, one of them. And by the way, the Quran <clears throat> here makes sense. It says that He make might make the message clear for them. Okay, so now is the message clear for you, a guy from Indonesia? Allah said He will never send to you a messenger unless He is an Indonesian. You see, it says his folk. So he have to be one of you. Speak in your language. Was Muhammad one of you speaking your language? Any Abdul? Hello? Hello? And look how look how brave they are. I mean, I am here. How many hours? Not even one Muslim call. Don't look for contradiction in the Quran. The Quran is itself is the contradiction. Every line in the Quran is a contradiction. Just to show you the stupidity of Muhammad. Didn't he in the same verse here say that we never send a messenger except to his people in the tongue of his people? Okay. In the verse after they say that Musa is a messenger of Allah. And then we read later, it says that Allah, he sent him to the Pharaoh. Was Muhammad from the nation of the Pharaoh? Hello? If the Quran is saying that he Allah he sent him in the language of his folk, which means from his he have to be a messenger to his people, and he speak the language of his people, so it have to be two things. Not only speak the language, you have to be one of them. How Allah is sending Musa to the Pharaoh. The Muslim they say to us only Muhammad was international messenger, but yet in the stupid Quran in front of us it says that Allah he sent Musa to the Pharaoh. Maybe Muhammad, he think the Pharaoh is a Jew? You are watching me from South Brazil? My, my friend, invite me. I want to go to Brazil. Really invite me. 
invite me to Brazil and I will speak to Allah to give you a corner lot in the heaven the same as Muhammad he promised a guy his name about Dahdah in exchange for his farm he told him give me your farm I will give you a corner lot in heaven any Muslim can explain to us how Musa's how Muhammad is the only international prophet Yet he don't speak any language except his language. How Allah never sent the messenger except in the language of his people. And he have to speak the language of his people, not someone else's people. And yet in the same Quran, you say to me that Musa's and Aaron were sent to Pharaoh. How many contradictions we found in one page? What will happen if we continue reading down? You know, the Quran is the same as a woman. She did not shave her legs for maybe 20 years. And suddenly, you are lifting the skirt up slowly. And the more you go up, the more you throw up. Keep the skirt down, please. Don't go to the beach, brother. What's wrong with this book? Can somebody shave the hair of the legs of Allah? Oh, by the way, have you ever heard of a God? He have hair in his legs and he have legs? Uh, hold on, hold on. One of you send me a picture. Where is the picture? One of you send me a picture. I need to find it. Hold on. I need to find the picture, the picture, the picture. Okay. Here we go. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. I will open the picture for you so you guys, you can enjoy this art. Okay, this gentleman, he did draw the description of Allah based on the hadith. Do you see Allah, brother? This is how Allah look like according to Islamic reference. He have a face. The Muslim, they say he have no neck. Nowhere mentioned that he have shoulders. Nowhere mentioned that he have anything else I mean there is a face there is a shin there's two hands and both hands are in the right side any Muslim have a comment brother huh any Muslim have a comment brother what do you think Muslims Yeah, this is Allah. Well, th this is what the Muslim says. You know, don't you remember Muhammad? He says, Allah have two hands, and both the hands of Allah is right hand. Doesn't say, do you remember the hadith? Okay, let me show you the hadith. Hold on. You don't believe me, huh? Okay. It's your fault. You ask for it. Here we go. Do you see it? And both of his hands are right hands. Do you see it, brother? Both his hands are right hands. So we are not making things up. Any Muslim have an objection? Please let me know. You know, we, we can because we can change. It's not final yet. Any Muslim have any objection, please? Just just mention it. You know, we will change it right away. I mean, if you can prove us wrong, this is the only God who have two hands and both of them they are in the right side. I feel sorry for him. What if somebody spank him from the left side? He cannot defend himself. That means the left side of him is very weak. 
I can punch him. I can spank him. I can steal his wallet. I can take his so phone from the left side. He cannot do anything because all his hands are in the right side. I mean, what's wrong with this God? Why, why he have two hands in the right side, brother? Any Muslim knows why? What's what's the problem? What's the problem? Obviously, there's a problem here. He is God, yet he's a leg. He have a shin. He have two hands in the right. He have two eyes. He have nose. He have hair, and they are curly. By the way, the picture is not too much good because we should make it curly hair, as Muhammad described. And he's short. This guy is short. Do we have any Muslim? Why Allah have a shin? Any Muslim can't tell us? Uh -uh. If you remember my debate with the Muslims, like the, the, the head of the Islamic Center of Tennessee, he said to me, do you think the shin of Allah is the same as your shin? Absolutely not. No way, brother. Who cares if his shin is like my shin or not? <laughs> it's a shin. Do we have any Abdul have a comment about the look of Allah? By the way, the guy who drew this, I think he can work very, very good. He can get a good job with the forensic department for the FBI. I mean, he described for him, he, he, he drew him. Like, and now I feel like I saw Allah before. So now we can publish this picture and we can capture him. Oh, this is not my this is not my art I can't claim it for myself you know that's I am you know I have a very high standard of art you know to the point I was invited to draw my art in Mecca where if you draw any art they will cut your head <clears throat> are you sure it was the left foot ah, you got you got a point here that it looked like this was a left foot hmm it should be uh, <clears throat> hold on no it is the right foot not the left foot but maybe we need to mirror the picture that's all just mirror it well I think he is stuck with it this way because he have to put the hands in the right side and this is why he have to make the foot uh, left foot <laughs> right because it doesn't say that Allah both hands are right right hands. Okay, so now he have no choice but to make the the foot left foot, because if the if the foot is is right, how we can put them in the right? Hello. And by the way, Muslims, Allah have only one foot. I feel sorry for you. You know, he, he will jump like the kangaroo in Australia. Boing boing boing. Only one foot. Do we have any Abdul here? Yeah, I agree. Allah is like none and none. Allah is like none. Why in the world Allah, his hands, both of them in the rights? And how Muhammad he knew where, where is the location of Allah's hands? Okay, I'm going to take it uh, the picture off because many of you might convert to Islam after seeing this. It's so, you know, especially women, they, they will see this hairy leg. They, they might get excited, the brother. Do we have any Abdul? Hello? Hello? What do you think? What what Zakir Naik he will he will say about this picture, brother? What if we make signs and we print them in the street and we say meet Allah? <clears throat> do we have any Abdul? No, Abdul. Okay. Well, look like uh, today we are out of Abdul. And uh, what we can do? 
uh, we are short of Abdul's these days. Abdul, they will come to you and they will fight on debating you if you are a person who do not know what are you talking about. Where is the Abdul? Where is the believers? We post in Facebook, we post in Twitter, we post in uh, Minds, we post in Patreon, we post every day. We are here, call us. Then we find the Abdul talking to himself in the front of the bathroom, says, I challenge Christian plans to debate me about the Quran and science. Come here. What, do you want me to go to your bathroom? Have you ever heard of a guy asking a guy to debate him, recording himself in the bathroom? The bathroom door is open and that way it's sit behind him. I mean, I agree with you that you will need the bathroom a lot when you debate me. But I mean, you don't have to do it there. You can say, excuse me. There's a guy, honest to God. A guy was debating me. This is many years ago. He The, the debate was getting really crazy and people, they were dying from laughing. And then he said to me, I, I really, really, I'm really sorry. I'm not trying away or anything. Please trust me. I need to go to the bathroom and come back. And that was almost 10 years ago. Until now, he never came back. Here we go. We have somebody. He bought the picture, guys. <laughs> we have an auction. Who, who pay more? <laughs> John, he claimed the picture. Who pay more auction? On two, on two, on two, on three. Who pay? Who pay more? Who buy it? Who buy it? The leg. <laughs> That's a good one. Oh boy. Yeah, he went into the bathroom. He never came back. Hmm. So any Abdul, let us let us move the picture because maybe this is the reason that the Abdul is not calling. I mean, you never know. They are shy. The hands of Allah both are right. <laughs> and why you have two hands? You know the funny, the Muslim they say, Allah is not a man. But they cannot tell us who is Allah. They knew he had two hands in the right side. He have a shin, he have a foot, he have a leg, he have five fingers in every hand. He have eyes, he have hear, ears, he have a face, which means, you know, the second year, you know, you say he has a face. This means he have a back. Unless his face is a flat like a paper. And actually, even if it's a, if it's a flat like a paper, still that means he have a back. Do we have any Abdul? Brother, any Abdul? You see, I'm, I'm thinking to open a, a gallery for a Christian prince art. What, what do you think, guys? Like, now we already have a collection of arts. Like, uh, any Abdul art? Like this, you know, which is auction time. Any Abdul, a picture is drawn in the sixth century, in the time of the Prophet, peace upon him. Hello. 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 Yes, my friend. Good evening. We hear you. Good evening. Um, I'm a Christian. All right. Um, I just have your book, um, four of your book, and I'm looking at it. Um, I see in the Surah chapter 33, um, I mean, when you look at the verse, that uh, all the benefit for Muhammad, like having wife, and I look at the Christian when God speaks to prophet, like if, I just want to make an example, if anything like, like prophet, like maybe God has something for them, I think it will come from others to tell them the plans of God, like maybe married to other person, it will not come from the prophet himself. Like I say, all the benefit from Muhammad 
came from him, but not all there. Like somebody telling him, Thou says the Lord, Muhammad, this is what it is, this is what it is. But everything about him came from him. I just want you to expatriate on that, like uh, the benefit through him that he possessed for himself. Yeah, you see the Quran, the Quran itself says, uh, follow not those who ask you wages. And that is a contradiction again. You see, like today we are talking about a, a, a series of contradiction. Uh, how the Quran say that you should not follow the one who asks you wages for their own, and then Muhammad is asking for wages. No? Uh, yes. Obviously, there is there is a uh, there is a mistake here. It can't be. It can't be true. There is somebody, um, uh, you know, contradicting himself. He claimed that we should not follow anyone who asks wages for his own. But yet, Muhammad, he want any women to sleep with him, uh, and you know, he want the fifth of every uh, attack. Uh, he want people to. Uh, 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 to pay him uh, 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 for private consultation. So, uh, how we can match those together? We cannot match them because simply, Muhammad is a false prophet. The Quran is full of verses speaking of that. Muhammad, he is getting money and benefit from what he do. But yet, Muhammad, he says, He's a prophet. And as you said, like, you know, uh, when Jesus, when Jesus, he, uh, uh, if you read in the, in the Bible, you see Jesus, he make miracle and he said to them, don't tell. Don't tell. Yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Jesus, he just made a miracle and just he tell to them, don't tell. <laughs> Muhammad, he do nothing, but he tell about something he did not do. Do you follow me, Muslims? Jesus, he make amazing miracles, and then after he do it, he say to the guy, don't tell anyone. Now, for sure, the guy, because he's extremely happy about what happened to him, he cannot hide it. So he say, look what happened to me. I was a blind. Look at me. It's, you know, it's like amazing. So don't tell. And Muhammad, he tell miracles which nobody see. He went to the, the Muslim, they say, that Muhammad, he went to heaven. How Muhammad he went to heaven in the top of a donkey, and the donkey don't even have wings. <laughs> Any Muslim can tell me where is the heaven located, and where where in the Quran it says that he went to heaven. It doesn't say that. It's a fiction story. Even the Quran does not confirm it. If we go in chapter thirty-six, verse number one, sorry twenty-one, it says. And they are the guided one. You can read any translation you wish. It's confirmed in the Quran that we should not follow anyone who asks you for fees. All the Quran confirmed that Muhammad is working for fees. You pay him, you meet him. You pay him, you talk to him. Even when the blind man, he came to Muhammad, Muhammad, he kicked him out because he was busy with the rich men of Quraysh. He favored always the rich one over the poor one. So how the Quran says, follow those. And by the way, you know what this verse is talking about? Those verse, this verse is speaking about the apostle of Jesus. So the Quran confirmed that the apostle of Jesus, they have amazing teaching. They say to people, don't follow the one who asked you wages. And this is what Paul, he speak about himself. I mean, what is the benefit of me? They accuse him to lie. The Muslim, they say to you, that, Jesus, just, that Paul, he said, if my lie will glorify God. He didn't say he's lying. People, they are accusing him that he's lying. So he's saying to them, well, what is the benefit for me? If I'm glorifying someone is not me. And I got nothing from it. I got no wages. You are saying to me, I'm a liar. So what is the benefit for a liar who glorify someone? He got no benefit of it. 
He isn't a good little fine himself. Do we have any Abdul? Why Muhammad in the Quran says, before you meet the Prophet in a private consultation, you have to pay him money. We want a Muslim to call us. Where are the Muslims? Chapter 58, verse number 12. Oh, who believe you believe when you consult the messenger in private spend something one verse saying to us you should not take wages for yourself and the other verse saying to me to us if you want to meet with the Christian prince spend something brother sisters my name is Muhammad Zakir Naik brother and if you don't make a donation for me I will not talk to you in private thank you very much because I'm a very very good guy and I don't care for money why the prophet he need to be paid for a private consultation a brother we accept hamburger and we accept mcdonald it's okay if you don't have too much money it's okay mcdonald is okay please uh, don't forget to bring with you some uh, ketchup and by the way the word ketchup is an islamic word which means catch and up which means like the, the what happened uh, because the first one who got ketchup, it was the Prophet Muhammad himself. Brother Tatar, if we ask Zakir Naik, he will say this. Brother Tatar, the truth is that everything in the West is absolutely a big fat lie. As an example, they did it to you that the best thing the American they created, it was the ketchup. The truth is that the first one was ketchup, it was the Prophet Peter upon him. If you read the story of the Prophet, you will see that the angel, he squeezed him. And then they catch him and he went with him up. Thank you very much. And that is ketchup. Thank you. So it's true. Islam is the first one who came with the ketchup. The angel, he catch Muhammad. He squeezed him. And my unit came out and ketchup. And he catch up with him to heaven. But there is no witnesses for the ketchup of Muhammad. There's no witnesses of the squeezing of Muhammad. There's no witnesses of Muhammad seeing an angel. The only way, anything we have, they, they, they claim that they have ketchup. Do we have any Abdul? You want to debate? Eric, you are a Muslim, Eric? Who's a Muslim I debate me? Who is a Muslim would like to debate me, please? Anyone? Okay, for how long now we are here? What is the time now? <clears throat> we are here almost for three hours and a half. Hmm. Not even a single Muslim he called me. There is one who uses a voice changer. Mayday, Mayday, who is a Muslim would like to call me? Hello? Last call? Anyone? Last call. Who is a Muslim would like to call me? Who is a Muslim? I'm not sure why I'm saying I was a Muslim. Let us post this picture. Because I'm losing my voice, keep showing who is a Muslim when I call me. Any Abdul. Do you remember the story I told you when I was in the Philippines? I was in the elevator. I was speaking in the phone and then when I went in the elevator up, I lost connection. I don't remember really exact details of the story, but as I remember, I, the guy, he said to me, Assalamu Alaikum, he's a Filipino, Abdul. So he said to me, Assalamu Alaikum, I said, Alaikum Assalam, Abdul. He said to me, MashaAllah, you know my name? 
He think I know his name. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. MashaAllah, you know my name? I said, sure I know your name. What are you talking about? <laughs> like what? Like you should see his eyes. His eyes like coming out. MashaAllah, you know my name. Yeah. Sure, sure I know. You know how you know my name? <laughs> All of you are Abdul. What, what do you mean? I, how I know how I know your name? <laughs> oh boy, hmm. Any Abdul? The Abdul just don't want to debate uh, uh, American. You remember the Filipino guy? He said, I debated real American. This guy have an accent. This is not real American. Supposedly, if you are an American. You know, they are like a big shot. This guy is not a real American. Can I ask you, do you believe in self-defense and the turn on the other cheek? My friend, the turn of the other cheek and Christianity have nothing to do with denying self-defense. What Jesus was saying, this is because many people, they have some ignorance. In the time of the Roman, there was a law. Actually, it's uh, there is many law exist like that. Let's say there's a noble law, which like a, a noble man should not beat a man in certain way. If you want to fight him, you have to fight him in certain rules, correct? Otherwise, you will be taken to court. So what Jesus was saying, use the law. <clears throat> in the Roman law, if you hit the person in the wrong cheek without his attention, you know, like let's say, because you are taking him into surprise. So if you hit him in that cheek, you go to jail. So what Jesus is saying, well, don't fight him back. There's a police, there's a government, there's judges. Fight him back will not make any difference. You, both of you, you will be violent and both of you will go to jail. Turn the other cheek. This is not about the Christians. Anyone can beat them, my friend. Come to me and beat my cheek and I will tell you what will happen to you. You want to try? I do. You want to try? So the Muslims they think that Christianity teach that anyone can beat the Christians. That's false. That's not true. When I was in the Philippines, a guy he put his knife in the front of me. He is asking me for my wallet. I chase him and I took the wallet with him, but it turned turned to be. That the wallet he have, he run away. He keep running. He keeps saying to me, "What do you want from me?" And then he throw a wallet in the ground. I said, "Your wallet." He throw a wallet in the ground, and he stop. He, you know, he's gone. So I took the wallet. I took it to the police. Then we found that the wallet is a wallet of somebody he stole from somebody else. So you want to scare me with a knife? Come to me. You want to take my wallet? I took the wallet. Coward. He have a knife in his hand. I stop forward. He go backward. And this is why they think, you know, the Muslims, they think the Christians, if you beat them, they will let you beat them. You know, they, 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 Abdul, try. Just try. What Jesus is speaking about is not to be evil. Use your brain. Use the law. Otherwise, Jesus himself, he asked his apostles to go and buy swords. Why? Because when they travel, there is a bandit in the way. He allowed them to carry sword with them. <clears throat> Self-defense is always necessary. Always, not sometime. Because you will not go to self-defense unless it is time to defense. You know what I mean? If there's a police there, there's no need for self-defense. Are you getting my point, my friend? We use the term of self-defense because now you are by yourself. There's no law to protect you. There's no police to be there. But if there is a law, if there is a police, then don't, don't, don't be stupid. Because remember, even if you are defending yourself, let us say you shot somebody who was trying to kill you. Okay, still you will go to court, you will go to jail, and then the judge will will, uh, will approve that you did not do any guilt, and then they will let you go. It's not going to be like a, a something. So. If you can avoid all of this, why you want to do it? If you can, if you have the police who do it legally, 
they come they defend you they shoot the one who want to kill you why you want to do it yourself if somebody is being evil don't be evil with him let the evil the police will deal with him unless as we said you have no choice any abdul Hello? Hello? Okay. Well, look like we are out of Abdul for today. So I want to say, guys, thank you for being here. May the Lord bless you. And I hope tomorrow we will have another broadcast. Tomorrow is Thursday. Should we do broadcast tomorrow, guys? Tell me, tell me, what do you think? Should I do another one tomorrow? Or you are like bored because of listening to me? What do you think? Should I do broadcast tomorrow? Okay, you did not learn yet. I told you many times, if you say yes, I say no. We are Arab. We live used, we hate democracy. Why you say yes? Well, why you give me one? Unbelievable. I mean, you are listening to me all this time. You did not learn. We are Arab. We, we hate democracy. You say yes, we say no. Don't do that. If you say no, I will do broadcast. If you say yes, I will not do broadcast. Uh, okay, it's your fault. Okay, it's your fault. So what I can do? I mean, this is this is your fault. You are not learning about us. And the funny, they say to you, uh, all uh, people are equal. No, we are not equal. We are the best people ever. You see, in the Middle East, let me tell you the advantage of living in the Middle East. Their brother, we celebrate the Christmas every day because the electricity go off, on, off, on, off. You do not need you need you do not need a tree, brother. The electricity never on. It is on, off, off, on. This is one of the advantage. The same as the faucet. You want to wash your hand? The water off, on, off, on. You call the company, brother. You say to them, why the electricity is not working? They say to you, Inshallah, tomorrow we will fix it. And that is what they say to us since like 60, 70 century. Inshallah, the whole world is like... The whole country is there. They are running by Insha'Allah. This is why nothing is fixed. The street is the same. The electricity is the same. Unbelievable. Insha'Allah. Anyway, thank you, my friend. Thank you for being here. May the Lord bless you. And maybe tomorrow, we hope, Insha'Allah. That means nothing will happen. Abdul will come tomorrow. God is willing. And we don't care for Allah. Our Lord is our protector and our provider. If you want to see how silly Islam is, watch our videos. If you want to see how amazing the Messiah is, go and read his words in the gospel. Nothing like him and nobody can teach better than him. He is the truth. He is the Alpha. He is the Omega. If there is something a human being can be proud of, to be a human is that God himself come to us as a human. And when he became a human, he spoke still wisdom, amazing wisdom, which can be a solution for all mankind the problem. Love your enemy. Imagine if every person in this earth practice one sentence of Jesus Christ teaching, love your enemy. We will not need police. We will not need army. We will not need weapon. Nobody need to spend a penny over a bar of his window or security system. We will not need anything. And the money we waste, which trillions of dollars just for arms and weapon and armies, will be solve every problem of every poor person. The earth is not poor, but the mind of a human being is poor. The devil is dividing you and making you evil. The solution is to come to the Messiah who he said, love your enemy, which nobody ever thought about such a thing. And nobody ever dare, even now, after 2,000 years of Jesus Christ, dare to say such a thing. One sentence of the teaching of Christ can solve the hunger of the world, can make the African rich, can make the homeless have a house, can make everybody live in a comfortable life with no fear. It can turn this earth into heaven. So the problem is, we are not in heaven, for we refuse to follow him.
follow him my friend and receive his peace he is the one who can give you what he have nobody can give you what he don't have the only one have peace and love and mercy that is his name with his name i leave you in peace and may the lord bless you all and this is a christian prince hope to see you soon again tomorrow god is winning thank you very much take care bye, -bye.